We are live with the special Varsity Sports Network Suncoast Game of the Week presented by the School District of Manatee County. Here we are, Ken. We're in the Cove located in Port Charlotte. We're bringing you tonight the Rumble on the Peace River. Tonight, the hosting Post Charlotte Pirates square off against those visiting Charlotte Fighting Tarpons. If you're looking for that friendly game between respected foes, you have absolutely turned into the wrong place because tonight it's about local bragging rights and the big game annually for both schools. Hello, I'm Brian Barnador. Hey, hey everyone, uh, good to hear you again. See you from you tonight. I'm joined tonight by my broadcast partner, Mr. Ken Burton Jr. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my broadcast partner, Ken Burton Jr., for your thoughts, Ken. Yes, thank you, Brian. Good, good evening, everybody. And uh, you know, the best thing about football uh, in the fall and the cool weather is the rivalries. And we were talking before the game about the Florida, Florida State. You know how that divides families. And even at the local level, you know, uh, Braden, Palmetto is going to Braden River. That was a rivalry that uh, has kind of evolved over the last 10 years. Uh, Manatee and Sarasota are playing. But, but in Manatee and Sarasota, you have multiple rivals. I mean, there's half a dozen in each one. But here in Charlotte County, the third oldest county in America, they have ones where 75% of all the high school students go to these high schools tonight. And they do not like each other. And this, this is a huge thing. Back since 2004, Charlotte has won 15 of the 18 matches, six of the last seven. But in those last seven games, Brian, it's been decided by less than seven points. The coaches are both local, local born and raised. Corey Minsker, it is in his inaugural season, started out here as a ball boy, played, Went to college. C coach Binky got him to come out. Hey, come coach for coach for a year. Seven years later, he's the head coach. And then on the other side, Jordan Ingham grew up in Port Charlotte, a Port Charlotte graduate. This is his 11th season. He's two and eight against the uh, Charlotte Charlotte uh, team. And uh, uh, but. You can't, you can't ask for a better matchup. And it's it's a great, they've got the Peace River here, you know, sounds so beautiful. One team on the, one side of the river, the other team across the other type, side of the river. Two great names, mascots, you know, and you have the Pirates and the Fighting Tarpons for you guys that are watching our broadcast from outside of the state of Florida. It's one of my favorite places to come and, and watch this football game. And it's, it's very similar to, you know, what I think of the SEC West when teams like Alabama and Auburn will play each other mm -hmm. the weekend before uh, the SEC championship. Or, you know, it would be the Mississippi State Ole Miss, the Egg Bowl, the Egg Bowl yeah. Iron Bowl. You know, two divisional teams from the same division, uh, from the same general area. And that's what you have down here. And you can tell the crowd has turned out here. I'm, I'm seeing well over 5,000 here. Uh, expect Expectation, there may be 10,000 people here tonight. Uh, and expect an exciting game. With the game itself, Ken, you know, Charlotte went off. Uh, the Tarpons had a little bit of a sluggish start last week offensively. And then on the other side, defensively, you know, the, 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 Char the Port Charlotte team, you know, scored 49 points but lost a game 56 to 49, I believe the score was. Yeah, right here on this field last week, and you know, we were talking about it before. How do you, how do you score 49 points in a high school game and lose? And, and they put up some great stats. Oh yeah, quarterback had over three, well, 297 yards of- Might as well be 300. Of, of passing and then went for 46 yards rushing. So there you go. You know, you've got uh, 340 yards rushing there, uh, or rushing and passing out of one quarterback. You have a running back that went for over 200 yards and you end up coming out of the game with Losing. a loss. And the quarterback threw for uh, 300 yards with no turnovers. No turn, that's the key. No turnovers, uh, and uh, you think 100 points in a college game is, is phenomenal, but in a high school game where you're playing three quarters of a college game, you know, you're, you're there watching that game. Your, your neck is sore from just, I mean, it was a track meet. And then Charlotte, on the other hand, couldn't muster any offense against Fort Myers Dunbar last week, lost a heartbreaker. 23 to 3 and Dunbar is the only common opponent two weeks ago 
uh, Port Charlotte beat Dunbar, and then Dunbar beat Port Charlotte. And if you if you go by the Massey ratings, the, the funny thing about this, you know, I said earlier, the games are decided by less than seven points. Massey's got this as a draw, 50-50, with Port Charlotte squeaking it out 21 to 20, but only time will tell. Well, I can tell you the field conditions, we had some rain here today earlier, are pretty good. Now, one thing that may have happened last week, I know there were a lot of games that were canceled last week yes. in high school football in the state of Florida, mm -hmm. and that may have been one of the games and here in Florida, you have phenomenons where where it's 20 miles or 10 miles away, and you've got an unplayable game, and then just 10, 15 miles down the road, not a cloud in the sky. Yes. And so what may have happened is that one game goes out for, you know, where there's a good, fair weather, and I wonder about the weather in that 23-3 to three game with the Tarpons. You know, that's something I didn't do. Uh, research on that but in Florida it can be very sloppy conditions here yeah you know around the country a lot of a lot of schools will start after Labor Day here in Florida they start uh, three we, you know this is already you know they played a preseason game and this is week two uh, so you you the first part of the year the elements play a big deal here and and as you said tonight we've been fortunate here we caught a little rain on the way down but uh, the field looks good uh, doesn't look beat up and uh, I don't think there's going to be any rain tonight. And it's on like a 20% chance. So we should be good tonight uh, where the field uh, should not be a factor, hopefully. Let's let them play. And so we're going to have the Charlotte Fighting Tarpons are taking the field now. And so in this very huge game, you know, Kenny, why don't we turn around? Let's get set up here. In this huge game here, this is uh, a press box here where Ken and I will be looking directly <laughs> west into the sunset. This is one of those fields that runs north and south here in Florida, and we get the opportunity to look into that blazing Florida sunset just over the horizon. So Yeah, it'll be about a quarter where uh, we're going we're gonna to have to kind of use our hand to, to block the sun a little bit, but uh, we're used to it. it. It happens every so often, but my goodness, what a huge crowd. I think I think all of Charlotte County, County is here tonight to uh, to uh, watch this game, you know, for the bragging rights. It splits families right down the middle. Not, not, not a family like yours when it's Florida, Florida State, but uh, <laughs> I know in our family when it's a game like that, you know, you got half of them Gators, half of them Seminoles, and uh, the, the tax collector here is a friend of mine, Vicki <laughs> Potts. She was a graduate of Charlotte, but her kids went to Port Charlotte. So, Oh, my. Yeah, so who do, who do you pull for? Now the senior, Thomas Forte, for the Charlotte Farting fighting tarpons they it's a, he's a senior and he kicks it off from the 40 yard line very nice looking kick and it's about eight yards deep into the end zone so just a great kick yeah that that might be a, a factor in the game with his foot i mean he made that look easy brian and uh, to take that element again i say it every week if you got a kicker that can put it in the end zone you know that takes away your your fastest guy back there that can can make a change in the game so now that dynamic Port Charlotte offense is coming out there. And, you know, we, we've seen some great things by Bryce Eaton last week, uh, throwing for 297 yards. Uh, they're going to come out in a one-back set, two wide receivers to the right, and a big tight end out there. Uh, yeah, offensive tackle left side of the field and a slot receiver over there in a tight formation to the left-hand side. Running sidecar back there is the dynamic Ed Carrier. And this time they throw a little bubble screen out there. It's incomplete pass. Yeah, it looked like there might have been a confusion who was supposed to catch that ball. Uh, uh, they're, like you said, they're going to try to get it to uh, their skilled people. They, they lit it up last week for a lot of yards. Uh, one, one of those guys caught 10 passes. So Eaton starts out 0 for 1 on the game, uh, sends his slot receiver over in motion. This time he looks and he throws it out there. Nice route and the ball is dropped there. Perfect throw, Jamal Streeter Jr. Uh, he slipped a little bit coming out of the cut. That got his eyes a little bit, uh, he didn't come up clean with that one. Yeah, the thing is though, it hit him right there as we watched the replay. Hit him in his hands and 
I, yeah, I think he just took his eyes off it a little bit and made the bobble. Fortunately, it wasn't picked up because it was uh, very high in the air. And the, and the DB had slipped on the route back there. Now he throws the same route again. This time it's right on the stride. First down on the play. Completion goes to the 36-yard line. So Jamal Streeter Jr. Uh, redeems himself. Last week, a big week. Uh, had well over 100 yards receiving. Ten, ten receptions, I think a buck 62. 152. Just, just running a slant there. This time they take the ball in the middle of the field. Great play by the defense there. The Tarpons along uh, for the stop there was number 21, which was Connor Trim, the linebacker. And that was Ed Guerrero, uh, the running back that uh, we were talking about pregame that uh, rushed for over 200 yards last week. Off to a slow start on that first carry. So 11.08 on the clock here. Now this time, receiver is going out in. Jamal Streeter goes out wide to the left. This time it's a toss sweep to Guerrero. And he lowers his shoulder, takes a pretty good hit there. First is number three, Shakori Thomas. The cornerback comes up and makes a play. Uh, and uh, really... Like, like the call on the short side of the field and... Uh, let, let him redeem uh, the last play. Better blocking by his offensive line to make it uh, third and pretty long. Third and seven. Now you can see the field conditions out there. The tight end soft. It looked like the tight end moved over there on the left he, side of the formation. You were talking about him pregame. He is a special specimen, Brian. 81. Yeah, 81. Now that's uh, the the defensive end for Charlotte there. Kale and Newton. Kale Newton. And you know we don't have heights and weights here, but I'm guarantee he's 6'3" about 225, I would say. Long ball thrown down the boundary. Good toss. Receiver makes a great play, catches it. He's at the 30. He's at the 10, all the way down to the six yard line. Man, what a catch. What a catch. Great pitch and pe catch there. Sorry, Thomas. I know Jamal Streeter. Jamal Streeter, yep. yes. With another great route. Had that three kind of tucked up underneath his jersey, kind of hard to see. But uh, down, knocking on the door in the red zone are, is Port saved, Charlotte. Saved the touchdown there. Hard running there, driving forward, and that is number two, Ed Guerrero, the junior running back. Now, what a nice drive there. How, what a great way to open up the game, Ken. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're coming out, uh, no huddle. And uh, the, the deep pass and then give it to your big back there who just uh, runs over and carries three tarpons, I mean, three uh, pirates into the end zone for the easy score in two minutes, two-minute offense. Carson Bargazin awaits. There's a little bit of a high snap kick is up, and it is good. So the freshman, number 90 there uh, with a nice kick. And so seven to zero here with exactly 10 minutes on the, on the clock, Ken. Yes, and now uh, Charlotte is going to uh, have to, uh, with just scoring three points last week, uh, they're gonna have to at some point match this and uh, get their offense uh, you know, in high gear. Uh, this, this could be a, a track meet again tonight, the way, uh, the way that first drive looked, we'll see how the Tarpons make adjustments here. Man, they, they looked like they were mid-season form, the way they just uh, just uh, ran their routes and the ball thrown crisp and the blocking. And so now Brian, uh, Brian Agustin back there, a senior, number 24 is back there to return this kick. And what we've seen here, and we'll talk about keys of the game later, the freshman is gonna kick this one off from the 40 yard line. So Carson Barghausen kicks this one to the high pooch kick. It's gonna be fielded there at the 25 yard line. He's up at the 30. Oh, big oh, hit there. <laughs> and now the, coming up to make a tremendous hit is number 15. And <laughs> felt that one up here, Brian. Aaron, I'm breathing hard. Aaron Brown, just a, the senior defensive back. What a collision at the 37-yard uh, line. I think Port Charlotte uh, saw something in their film where they did not want to kick that ball deep, but uh, great coverage Ooh. and a great individual play there. 
Oh, I'm, I'm still feeling that. Yeah, it's Kim. He's been hanging on to his sternum after, <laughs> after that hit. Two receivers to the left, one single receiver out there to the right. Poor Charlotte creeping up. Four man front, three linebackers out there, one single safety. High snap, gets it that back, number 24. He's going to be tackled by 54. Really good tackle on the play by Grant LaBollister, the junior linebacker. But again, that 24, that's a number get familiar with. That's Brian Augustin with a great run. Yes, and for a team that just scored three points to come out and establish that running game and moving the chains on first down is a great start. Chris McNeely's out here wide to the left. This time they hand the ball off the back. Big hit up in the middle. Uh, gain of about half yard on the play. Yeah, it appears the Tarpons are going to come out and try to establish the run and uh, you know look to wear down the, the defense. Uh, maybe slow this game down a little bit. So now that brings up a second and eight here for the Tarpons. 9.15 on the clock. Hand off to Augustin again, and he goes for a nice little gain of about two and a half yards. So that's going to bring up a third and uh, about six yards. Yeah, this will be the first big test for the fight in Tarpons. Uh, you notice both teams are going no huddle. Uh, we're going to see a lot of football here tonight, don't we? you got Joshua Brown out here, the great talent receiver, cornerback, along with Chris McNeely wide to the left. Now he looks, steps up, good pressure. Uh, it's going to be tackled after a gain of about three on the play. Brings up a fourth and four. Yeah, uh, maybe see what, uh, there was nobody open down the field. He's looking for second and third options and finally, Hey, I just got to run this thing and let's uh, see if we can make it close. So, what, two or three yards from our vantage point here? Yeah, and so you normally a punting situation, probably going to try to draw Port Charlotte offside. Two receivers out here to the left, one single receiver out there to the right, one single back in the backfield. That's the big back, number 21, Connor Trim. They fake it to Connor Trim and they throw it out there. Great tackle. Joshua Brown on the reception. But what a great play there by that cornerback coming up making a play. Yeah, we can't read his number. Maybe we can pick it up here on the screen. But uh, look, looks number like 21. 21. Nice it, open field tackle. He had to, to get through a, a missed block there, but uh, read that play very well. And it gives this high potent offense. Who, what was their average starting position last? It was it like 41? Yes, uh, the Tarpon or last last year last week, last week uh, they ended up starting um, just about where they are now. They are now. Yeah, short fields. Oh, they fake it now. They He's look open. for the. Right down the middle of the field, number seven, and he drives forward, and he's going to be tackled at the 24-yard line. So great-looking play, and great reception there by Justice. Like, like the quarterback, watch him look off the, the first receiver, always going down the middle, number seven. Uh, nice pitch and catch. Justice Bursell. And this time they toss it out there to the back, cuts up, got a great block out there, driving forward and still going and finally driven out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Boy, they are clicking on all cinder, cylinders. And if you can get that pass going, that just makes this run easier. And and uh, he is a, he's a big dude, too. Nice and strong, runs yeah. hard. And great block out there you know, by the tight end out there. This time he drives forward for another uh, positive gain of about three, two yards. So it brings up a second and 10. And they're going uh, no huddle here. They're going to keep us hopping. Watch for number six there, Cameron Brissell, Sorella. He's in the slot back. And they look to him, and they got him out there. Oh, and in there. it is in for six. My goodness. You could see from the break of the formation, he looked like he was very, as when I looked at that, it was like the slot back's getting the ball here. Uh, he was very anxious over there, and he came out inside technique by the coverage. A slant to the outside, yeah. and quarterback there laid it. If you watch him here, watch him lay this pass right over the defender, put it in right in the spot, right oh. over the pylon. Perfect pass. And uh, they're waving no go, but uh, that was an easy touchdown. Bryce Eaton with a beautiful toss. That kick is straight up. 
Ken, and it oh is my good. Goodness. The freshman, uh, Carson <laughs> Barkhausen, will probably never have another kick. I hope that we got this one on the replay. Yes. Yeah. That one yeah. was. That was one that you would want to measure hang time on because it looked like <laughs> a punt, and it went 11 yards. It, had they had painted the goalpost, it would not have made it over, but just enough to squeak over. The freshman kicker in a big game here. Let's watch this. Watch this. Just he, got way under it and uh, just, just like a, shooting a free throw. <laughs> just like a lofted wedge out of a yeah, bunker. Yeah, softball just, pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's it. The, the, just be, out of the wedge. Just <laughs> get up under that thing and that's what he did, you know. Uh, you but know, he's a freshman. And, but it's it, it, they all count one point. That's right. And the, <laughs> in the scorebook, you know, it'll just say PAT was good. It doesn't matter how it looks. Beautiful. <laughs> Now, 14 and nothing. Wow. If you could duplicate that action again here as the sun is on the horizon here, we can see that would be a special type of pooch kick. You know, and you could see the field condition down here uh, in between the oh, yeah. 40. It's, it's, it's rough chewy. there. Yeah. It's, it's been raining. The freshman kicks it high and short, trying to find a hole. There it is. Bounces There's off a loose the ball. And great hustle play. And how about that? You know, we'll show the keys of this game eventually, Ken. One of them we had special teams, special teams, special teams against Bishop Verro last week. Bishop Verro's average starting possession, uh, possession was a 41. And so here is in our keys to the game, Port Charlotte. Port Charlotte, even teams. the coach said it. They got to win the special teams tonight. They got to tackle better. You got to block and tackle. That's a cliche. And then create the big plays. And so far, so good. You want to do Charlotte? Yeah, Charlotte create movement on offense. They've been sluggish now. It's been the, you know, it's been five quarters of very sluggish football, long sustained drives, and ignore the rivalry and all the pomp and Being circumstance. All the way the game. Game. Yes. You know, we're ahead of the curve over it, and history says that we're going to win this. You got to toss it all out and play football exactly. tonight. Exactly. Exactly. Boy, nice looking block. Oh. He slips and it looked like his knee was down, but he was able to drive forward. Now oh, late flag. a penalty very late. Yeah, it looked like a, a good developing play for the fight. Tarpon's uh, running a little inside out to the outside. You had to and and uh, then, he, then he just lost his footing again. You, you talked about it earlier. It, the footing there around the 30, 35 is not bad. It's in the middle of the field back on the other end where it, it's it's pretty rough. So the personal foul does go against Port, uh, Charlotte, Port Charlotte. You know, that looked like the old days of the wing tee here with the Tarpons. Yeah. You had a pulling yes. guard, big guard, and the back was tucked in behind him, good position, but Bink, slipped on his back. Binky Waldrop ran that, oh. ran, ran that till the cows come home, and it was so hard to picture, find the ball, but uh, yes, you're so right, Brian. And he is He was a legend here. Now Michael Valentino looks over the defense here. Stoppage of play water here, break, water probably. break. And really so far, you know, it's a 14 to zero lead for Port Charlotte, seven minutes and three seconds on the game. Ken, you and I had talked about the key, keys of the game before, mm -hmm. and it's kind of falling Falling into plan. place. And, and that game last week with Bishop Burrow, I think there were some lead chains and uh, they were up 21 or somebody just just watching the highlights real quick on a YouTube. It, it was uh, they got back behind and then he'd get the lead. So, uh, you know, don't count the tarpons out any on this. And th this little penalty here might be what jump starts them on on uh, this drive to establish uh, their offense, which uh, they again, they struggled last week. And I'll tell you, they got. Uh, number 98, Samuel Luther, the junior defensive lineman out there, is huge. And on the center of the line, also number 33, Myron Charles, a sophomore defensive lineman out there. They're standing next to each other. And then the D end over there, the 11, Samuel uh, Clerjusty, is a junior he outside looks line. Good. He looks that is a solid looking uh, defensive, defensive line. line, very solid. Valentine Tino looks oh. and he slips balls on the ground. He picks it up and it's still down. And that's oh going to be Port Charlotte ball. And that's number 33 on the play, Myron Charles. That's just something Charlotte did not need to do with an unfortunate. And again, another slip. You watch the quarterback just slipping on the field. And this is, you know, uh, very unfortunate. That ball's just, just hanging there. And uh, 
My goodness, Charlotte, I mean, Port Charlotte has an opportunity to go up here three scores. Well, no, I guess they must have called it dead. So they did call the ball dead there. I didn't see that, and this time Valentino looks. Now he throws a flare out there. Good catch out there, turning it up. Big gain oh, on the play. Yeah. First down, that is number 33, and that is going to be a nice catch there by Peyton McGee. Hats off to the quarterback here. He's running for his life. He finds his safety valve, number 33, who just happened to be at the right place at the right time uh, on the short side of the field to get that first down, and now they're in that muck we were talking about. Right? And, and here's one thing. When you have field conditions, as you can start to see, uh, we'll go to a water break here, Jim. When I drop my kids off and I see that they're on time, and they've been delivered safely, it gives me a lot of personal satisfaction to have done this for the community. I would encourage anybody who is like me, retired, to look into this and consider because it really has worked for me. Start a great future with the School District of Manatee County. Apply now at manateeschools.net slash careers. Great ad there for Manatee County Schools. Yeah. I think I knew Mr. Taylor, there, yes. the bus driver. Yeah, I, I think I recognized him, Ken. But proud, proud of our school district where we are both products of. Yeah, six minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Now, looking at field conditions here, if you it is it is wet out there. Yeah, you, you can know, see it on the screen. Great, great picture there. And the players are slipping, which gives a tremendous advantage to your receivers, your backs, yes. and everyone that knows where they're going. And, so, and the Charlotte and the Port Charlotte team, because this is their home field too, uh, especially that they they, they they play they play here. So uh, so they, and they get them out in space, yeah. and you're a DB, and you don't know, and the the offensive uh, receivers have a extreme advantage here. So that makes for big points. Big points. Because it's not a downpour, it's not a quagmire, but the field is slippery out there advantage to and, the and, offense. And it's unit. just in this one little area here. Everywhere else looks pretty good. Valentino looks, steps up. He's going to be harassed there and tackled once again. There's that big number 33, which is going to be, um, that is Myron Charles again. Yes, and as you talked about that, that defensive line, uh, they are really putting it to the Tarpons offensive line. And quarterback uh, doesn't have a lot of time to throw, and he's having to uh, look for his safety valves, but there, there was just nowhere to go. Offensive line is going to have to make some adjustments to uh, to uh, count, counter uh, counter the, the, the strong rush. They're only sending the, the four. Now the slot receiver out there is seven. It's a freshman and number 17, Trenton Curtis. And he looks really nice. And this time, Valentino looking for somebody again. Now he's rolling oh, to the left, and he's going to wow. be tackled there. A big loss on the play down at the 35. That was the middle linebacker, number 54, Brian. Uh, on a blitz, they, they're looking for him there. But uh, his quarterback tried to turn loose of it. But the, the, line, the blitz and linebacker there, uh, Johnny on the spot, yeah. makes a play for a huge loss. Grant. Uh, the baluster actually with a big tackle. He's a big dude, big dude. He looks the part. So that brings up, let's look at the markers here. It's third and <laughs> they have to 32. I'm they gonna, have to get on about the 34. So I'm going to say 32. And there it is on the on the monitor there. Third and 32. Yeah, so right. good to see. And now he throws it out there to the back, trying to break a tackle. Nice pickup on the play. Gets a little bit closer. Still 15 yards short. So that brings up a fourth and obvious punting situation. Yeah, and, and, you know, just stick to the simple plays like that. Get it out to your skilled guys and, and let them make plays. Of course, they're, they were playing back on that with third and 32, but uh, definitely going to punt this time and play the field position battle of the way because of uh, the way Port Charlotte has uh, been moving the ball. Let's see if we get a good snap here. A little bit high, big oh. pressure, gets the ball off. It's gonna be fielded there at the 30 yard line. Now he turns it up and a great tackle at the 25 yard line. So great play on special teams coverage unit. Yeah, Brian, I saw the same thing there too. It looked like uh, they were gonna block it and uh, 
uh, be in being great field position, but uh, great punt, great coverage. You know, flip that field. Uh, Char Port Charlotte has scored. Uh, you know, they're over over 70 points here now, in the, right at 70 points here in the last five quarters. So, you know, hey, make them go 75 yards to score as yeah. we get a nice uh, view yeah. from our, our uh, coverage there. And that was that Juju, that's the receiver back there return. Now there's a great run there and goes for about 15 yards in the first down. Once again, Edgar area doing his thing. They are clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, move, not in uh, moving things along fast. Now looking out wide here. Look for Jamal Streeter, the junior. He's a, he's a junior, right. and he's Jamal Streeter, junior, on the right. He looks like he wants that ball in the middle of the field again. It's there for single him. Now high, single, single back. Single high safety. They look for him. Now oh it's my. headed his way, and he, <laughs> it is thrown outside. And he had the middle of the field. If he runs a straight uh, skinny post there, it's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. But, yeah, just that single high safety there. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to just keep feeding him the ball until they figure out how to stop it. I mean, my goodness. And he's, you know, he, he turned two or three different ways there. There's just my Coach goodness. Jordan uh, watching him there. He was open. This time they pitch it out there. Nice footing there. Steps up, takes a nice hit. He's going to be about half a yard short on the play. Ball's going to be at the 49-yard line. Look, he, he and, and the again, chains. as you said <laughs> earlier, for the for the skilled athletes, that's their running back running through their muck. He, you know, he practices on this field. He plays. He can run through that, and it's not going to bother him. This time inside, the, the very good defensive play there, and uh, coming up there. And that would be number 20, I believe it was number Actually, 22 coming up. 20. Looks like they stopped him for a loss, maybe. Or at least, no, they're right on the 50. Yeah, they actually the minus yards. Sentina the Trina, the linebacker there uh, with a great play. Yeah, second and 11 now, Ken. Eaton brings him over in the formation, throws a little bubble out there. He's got a receiver, tries to make one or two miss, does not, and he's going to be down right at the line of scrimmage. It's gonna bring up a third and 10. Good play by the defense. Good play, sets you up for a third and long. This is a great opportunity to get off the field. Charlotte has got to get the right call here and uh, keep them in front of the sticks. So one of the Bissarell brothers out there. Oh, this time it's off sides. That's oh. gonna bring up third and five. You know, kid on the roster here, number six and number seven, sophomores, listed as uh, running backs here for Port Charlotte. Uh, Cameron and Justice, same spelling, but surreal. So must be twin brothers. Twin brothers, double trouble. This time they run the option out there. Nice looking run. Running hard and low and first down, all the way down to the 26 yard line. Number 16, Brian, that's John. John. John Julius Roach, Roach and really the, the five yard penalty made no difference. He was already two levels before they got him got a helmet on him. Roach generally plays wide receiver. They put him in the back. Beautiful thrown ball. Great Touchdown. catch. My and he goodness. is in four six. And that is Justice Bursarill. One, one of what their a catch. sophomore brother. Yeah, and you watch this on the replay. Watch him make the timing as he times this to go up for the ball. Nice pass, goes deep. Now I go up for it, catch it over the defender. Almost kind of double coverage there. They made it look easy and they have 20 points and we're still in the first quarter. They have been, My what, goodness. What two beautiful throws on those corner routes from quarterback Bryce Eaton. Remarkable. Now the freshman comes to kick this one. It's gonna be a, a good snap. Kick is up. And it is good. And so now with 51.6 seconds left in the first quarter, it is a 21 to zero advantage here for poor Charlie. Can what is as, as I yeah, that, man, I have not seen an offense, high school offense like this uh, 
you know, really until we, we saw the highlights of that game last week, you know, in, in a long time. You know, Palmetto a few years ago when they were scoring over 40 points a game, uh, when they went all the way to the state semis, that's what I'm seeing here tonight. And and uh, they, they are just uh, amazing so far here. Charlotte has not figured out how to slow them down. Avant Harris is a single back there to return this one. He's setting up shop on the 20. So that obviously they expect another pooch kick out of the freshman. He drives it to the other side of the field. It's going to be fielded at 25. And then out there trying to get a block. Oh, great speed. He's at the 45, 50, 45, all the way down to the 40 yard line. So you see some great speed there by number 24. And we mentioned that name again, which is Brayon Augustin. And great uh, adjustments on the special team. If you keep doing the same thing, that's going to give the special teams coach to make a little adjustment. So, hey, we'll go to the wide side of the field, set this wall up here, and he is off to the races. Charlotte needs to respond, and they've got a short field to make it happen. So, really, the only uh, Achilles heel is the short kicking uh, that has been seen out of Port Charlotte here tonight. Otherwise, a tremendous game. Look at this. Yeah. Nowhere to go. Yeah. It's Valentino. No. Throws Saw it to him. the middle, and he's got a receiver. Shakes a tackle, and now drives to the 10-yard line. A, a late developing play as they run in the slant. He wanted to throw him, but there, there was a defender there covering. But he got open, and he kept his eyes down the field. Look, second option, running for his life. Now I'm open. There Brady. he is, and almost, sco almost scored a touchdown on that. Brady, a little inside. Brady Hill stayed alive, kept looking down the field, ran to the opening. Good hook up there by the quarterback. So now the, on the first down play, positive play, that's going to probably bring things down to the end of the first quarter here, Ken. Yep, so just a just a, a dive. Hey, let's uh, let's just work this thing and and uh, grind it out and, and get that score. So second and goal now as the clock goes to zero here in the second quarter. Uh, fun game to watch here tonight, Ken. Absolutely. Every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. Valentino, he's had a lot of pressure there. The sack was on. Ball came out. Let's see how they sort this one out. 11.52. The, the poor Charlotte fans were lobbying that, uh, that hey, we got the ball, but uh, no, no dice. So uh, Charlotte gets dod dodges a – oh, wow. Dodged a bullet there. They're lucky to have the ball as we watch that replay. Thank you, guys. Great job there on the cameras. But uh, Charlotte now with a third down – Goal. Ball just outside of the five yard line. We'll call it the six yard line. So third and goal balls I at think, the six. I think we're in two down territory here. Definitely. And they're going to think so. about it. Take a timeout. So what you saw there from that Port Charlotte defensive line again, you know, that power three that we've talked about mm -hmm. there. They've done a superior job tonight uh, in the interior of the line. And you could see, uh, I, I really feel sorry for Valentino tonight. He is sliding all over the place. It looks like he's ice skating back there. Even down there on that part of the field, 
his feet were slipping and sliding. He could not get established, couldn't get set. Yes, you're right. I think they're in two down territory here. Um, probably run a bubble screen here or something, get it out to uh, one of your skilled guys or, or a flaring uh, running back here. But uh, they, they have got to get into the end zone here and uh, somehow get some points here to get back in this game really quick, Brian. So they're thinking it over real hard here, both sides in this chess match. So part, Port Charlotte uh, has now a timeout. Port Charlotte with their second timeout here. So that's a big one. There's only there's still a lot of time here in the second mm -hmm. quarter, and you're down to one timeout. So that's how the important. They're definitely this is a two for one, two opportunities. You're right, Ken. Two, yeah, it's two down territory here. Now Valentino looks things over. Now he runs to the right, and really big hit there. Drives forward, a really good run, but he's about a yard, two yards short. I like the call. It's very safe. Just a quarterback draw. Get get your big lineman and, and run behind him. And uh, and uh, he, he's down to about the one or two and uh, car carrying a whole bunch of uh, pirates there. And that was Eric Bell, number 21. He came in in a wildcat formation there. Great uh, call. Then they took Valentino, let Valentino have a little break. Uh, Eric Bell comes into the game, the junior defensive back wide receiver, uh, doing a little wildcat now from the three yard line. Looks like they may do it again. Fourth and goal. This time he looks, driving forward, Ooh. nowhere to go. He's down. He is short. He's going to be down at the one yard line. So now, the good news you got a big defensive stop. The tough news is you've got the ball at the one yard line. You've got 99 yards to yeah. go. And this, if you are the fighting Tarpons here, Ken, you're going to bring the house and you're going to try to get a, a holding penalty in the end zone for Absolutely. a safety or a tackle for loss for a safety. Got to try to come up with a safety from here. Yeah, and that's why it's two down territory. You, you really have nothing to lose. And and running that wildcat is you got to usually when you got your quarterback there, you're not going to worry about him running. But when you got that wildcat, you know, he could throw it or run it. And they chose to run it that time and it didn't work. Really rolling back to one single safety. And this time quarterback keeps rolls to the left there, uh, goes out of bounds at the 12 yard line. So really good gain on that first down play comes up about two yards short and uh he's not known he ran for a few yards last week we talked about that in the pregame but uh, just enough there to get four or five yards and uh, to get get a little breathing room yeah 46 yards rushing last week this time he pauses throws it tries to hang on to that wisely uh, held on to that ball takes a a no gain on the play. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing wisely as we watch him here. Oh, should I throw it? No, I better hold on to it. You know, right, you know, eight or nine yard line, you do not want to turn that ball over. Good strong hands by quarterback Bright. Eaton. This time it's a keeper to the middle of He's the field. Close. They're moving He's it. He's got it. They're moving those chains. So, you know, he shows, uh, yeah, very effective. A runner here, but he shows that he, uh, he, you know, he can pass the ball, but he's he, he definitely very can pass it. He's he is not going to beat you on his feet, but he is good enough and smart enough to move the chains. Mission accomplished. He is a willing runner. And Absolutely. That's, and that's what he's like. A oh boy, that's a nice oh, throw. Nice. Right. A good. That's a really <laughs> good that. defensive play out there. You know, that's number four that comes out there with Devon Harris for the tackle. But that's that deep foul. Uh, Bryson Eaton shows that uh, he shows that um, arm talent there. Yeah, Streeter is his top guy there. Uh, he was confident with him and uh, nice five yard game. He throw that one three miles an hour less velocity and it's a uh, pick six going the other way. Great run here. Stepping up there, driving forward and that is number seven there which is Justice Brissarello. Yeah, running, running the jet sweep. We haven't really seen that tonight out of them uh, using the wide side of the field. I tell you what, these, these I guess, twin brothers here are showing in a penalty at the end. Of, uh, personal foul. It looked like maybe a little bit of a horse collar at the at end the of the end, play. Let's really watch this here. Uh, yeah, running that jet sweep. Uh, this is going to move the chains. 
Yeah, they pushed him. Yeah, oh, he pulled kept, uh, he was two or three yards out of bounds. <laughs> he he let him go, let him go. Pulled the shoulder down <laughs> for no reason. Uh, silly penalty there. Uh, so all of a sudden they're out on the 40. First and 10, 9.15 on the clock. Very nice run, driving forward for about a six yard gain on the play, and that is Ed uh, Dreira again. again. He, and when your, your quarterback can, can throw the ball and, and run the ball decent, that's just going to make your stud running back that much better and easy running that. Toss sweep to the left. Really good defensive play there. Let's get another 81. There's that tight end we talked about at the in, beginning of the game, and that's Kale Newton there, the defensive end tight end. Yeah, he, he definitely passes the eyeball test. Running on the short side of the field uh, with that, uh, he kept, kept kept the ball to the inside there, just grabbed and played off the block. And, uh, uh, yeah, the, the tackle looks like you're the tight end there. Looked like he come up a little gimpy on that, but great play. He's got the uh, size, obviously about 6'4". Those long arms. 215, 220 is out there. <laughs> nice the and lanky. position. He looks. Ball is incomplete pass. Number four there, well defended. Avant Harris comes up, makes a play. Uh, really yeah. could have put that one a little bit out of there. Yeah, room. the receivers, watch. I watched them run down the field, and they kind of look confused. And, again, they're both over, uh, both uh, on the numbers in. That's, you know, what you need to spread the field out a little bit. I think they just got the play messed up. So fourth down, they, they've held them. Punting situation here for Port Charlotte. High, slow snap, rugby style kick, low kick. It's gonna be fielded there at the 25, cutting it up. Now he's at the 30, shakes one tackle, and then that is gonna be brought down by number 21. And number 21 is Eric Bell making another play. Yes, uh, that's probably the first time uh, Port Charlotte's had to punt all season. And uh, he was only like 10 yards, but that was by design with the rugby style, kicking that line drive down the field. So uh, Charlotte gets the ball back uh, with another chance. Uh, great, great stop. Uh, still sputtering on offense, trying to, uh, you know, hopefully they've made some adjustments on the sideline here. Let's see what they can do in this series. Valentino is back there, one back in the backfield, two receivers on each side of the formation, steps up, throws it out there, got a wide open receiver, he's at the 50, and he steps out of bounds at the 46 yard line. Nice little play there by Valentino. Yeah, and the key to that play was he, he pumped to the deep receiver. He was looking downfield, that little pump there, just enough to get your, your your receiver out there out there in the flats and uh, yeah, great call that's joshua brown gets the ball once again and so two big plays in a row for joshua brown to the boundary over there Al almost the same play except they just went out and threw it to him immediately and, and let him do his thing yeah good eight ten fifteen yards after he caught the ball that's what you want him to do good block by brady hall on the play yes also, it was number nine yes out there with a fine block to give him another six or and, seven and yards. that's a point well made brian uh, when you see receivers get getting a lot of yards after the catch somebody's out there downfield blocking for him two receivers on both sides of the formation and he's going with a wheel route down the boundary and pretty oh. good coverage out oh, there yes. there's a flag so incomplete pass. A little, little uh, hanging on there, uh, right there at about the 15 or 20 yard line. Uh, the referee, the back judge, was Johnny on the spot uh, right there and saw it through the flag. Uh, Charlotte quarterback there looking good. He had time to throw the ball. They made looks like they may have some, made some adjustments on their the offensive line and uh, threw a nice pass down the field. Uh, and uh, you know you don't get the spot, you get the penalty. Thought it was pretty good coverage by the defensive back. Mm -hmm. After you have two quick uh, outs out there, yes. you get a wheel rod action or an old out and up action, and he was in pretty good coverage, but. Uh, called for the defensive interference there. Now he goes for a first, very close to the first down on this running play. So we're getting some signs of life from this Charlotte yes. fighting Tarpon offense. And you're so right, Brian. The two two completions and the long pass. The linebackers got to think about it now. So that opens up the running game, and they're knocking on the door. 
Oh, and this time the ball's up and it is caught there. But there's a flag. There's a flag on that. Are they going to call an eligible receiver downfield? We saw some offensive linemen. Looked like they were trying to set up a screen. The ball might have been touched. It was tipped. deflected in the air. Yeah, off an ineligible uh, lineman. Yeah, so so was, you called that. When it was hit off the the offensive watch, lineman cannot touch the ball first. So watch the quarterback. He's looking for the slant. Throws it. Oh, did, did he hit 67? It's hard to say. I don't know. And the ball was tipped. If you look at that, it was tipped by a poor Charlotte player in the okay. middle of the field. Thank then, you guys for a great film there. Great coverage on the camera. Kind of a kind of a tough break tough here. Tough break on that one. They're very yeah. They were in the end zone. Mission accomplished. And unfortunately, it, it's going to come back. Didn't hit a lineman first. And they usually give you about a yard and a half on your pass blocking mm -hmm. or you know your run block. They give you a yard and a half from the line of scrimmage. The wiggle room. Wiggle room. Generally. Yes. You know, we're not going to call it. Right. And he was right there in that zone. So that was a tough call. 626 on the clock here in the second quarter. So I don't, this is a water break. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Riders, wear protective gear, make yourself visible, and follow traffic laws. Drivers. Look twice for motorcycles. Use caution when changing lanes. Motorcycles may be hard to see. And maintain four seconds of following distance. Motorcycles can slow down without activating a brake light. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. We welcome you back to this game of the week. Varsity Sports Network, Suncoast, Presented by School District of Manatee County. Well, here we are. And, you know, what was the experts say said that this one would be a 21 to 20 game. Toss up, yeah, 50-50. Well, there's 21 points on the board, but zero on one side. It's been completely controlled here by Port Charlotte, which is a little bit surprised here to many in the community. Oh, yes. Uh, as we talked about in the pregame, you know, this rivalry that goes back on Max Preps, Charlotte has won 15 of 18, six of the last seven. And, uh, yeah, nobody saw this coming tonight so far. It's a long way from being over. Valentino looks. He Pump. got it. And a receiver back in the end zone for the catch. Beautiful play. Great route. And Brady Hall, that wide receiving safety <laughs> junior, runs a beautiful route watch this the, the pump did it again and uh, they had run something like that earlier and threw it short this time they throw it to the receipt the receiver hall down the field for the easy score a much needed score and their first score of, of the year it only, only took almost uh, five and a half quarters and so Brady, it's a ball game looked like he was only going to get one foot down but he gives that look a uh, there is a penalty penalty on the play White hat comes out in the field. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, after the play. After the play. And that is on Charlotte. Charlotte. So do they put this on the extra point or probably, probably the kickoff? Probably the kickoff. Yes. So let's see. So Charlotte, the fighting Tarpons with six points on the board here. 554 remaining here in the second quarter, Ken. You know, that big, strong-legged kicker. Uh, they're going to snap this one back there, and he awaits and kicks this one through. Easy sledding there for number seven, and that's, that is uh, Thomas, Thomas Forte. Forte, the senior kicker punter. And you can see that he's got a fine leg. Yeah, he gets a good leg whip, um, which uh, generates the distance, kicking it over the – fighting Tarpon's band who are out there. I was wondering where they were going to sit because across from us, Charlotte has uh, packed the field and uh, like, where are they going to sit? Well, they've got him out in the end zone, so he kicked it over his band. This will be an interesting kick here now. So the ball... Well, he's going to kick it in the end zone probably. Uh, I don't know now because there was a personal foul. You're right. Before because uh, they're going to back it up uh, 15 yards. So he's going to be kicking off from the 25. From the 25. 25. So 25. Well, so we'll see how good his leg is here. We know he put it in the end zone the first time. So they're going to get a good run back here. Yeah, if, they, if they field it and don't let it bounce. Yep, 25. 
So they're going to have to get down there and cover this. So Forte now is going to kick this one from the 25-yard line. They're, they're both standing on their 20. So he's going to back them up a little farther than that. And to give you a perspective on this, most college kickers can kick it from the 35 just barely into mm -hmm. the end zone. And that's guys that get touchbacks 80% of the time. So this would be a monumental task. But the returners are back there waiting for the ball at the 20-yard line, Ken. Yeah, they're going to get a shot to return this and get some great field position. Forte with a nice. high kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15-yard line. Cutting up. Oh, making a player or two miss. And then tackled. Uh, that's going to be a fun one to watch on the replay. And that was number 16, which was... Uh, Julius Roach uh, returning that kick a sophomore. Forte, uh, what was good about that kick was the hang time that he got at. Allowed, allowed us, even though they slipped there, they had him covered. He had nowhere to go. Still uh, kept, kept him inside the 35 yard line, which would be the, you know, inside the 15 yard line if he'd come out of the end zone, which is pretty, pretty good. Pretty good coverage there. 547 on the clock here in the second quarter. The Port Charlotte Pirates lead this one 21 to 7. You know, in a, in a game that has really been pretty much one sided tonight. Pretty game. much one sided. They're, they're high octane. It wasn't a fluke last week that they, they put 49 up but gave up 56. You know, they made Coach Ingram's has, has made some adjustments with the defense. The defense is looking much better tonight. They're making the tackles. Uh, great game plan, uh, but the offense is a real deal, that's for sure. Now, Valentino, the quarterback for Charlotte, on the last series picked up 55, 60 yards of passing as mm -hmm. that was a pretty good Pretty good drive, pretty drive. good passes, and, and again, they made some adjustments to uh, get the score. And off to Ed Guerrero. And this time, nowhere to go. No gain on the play clock winds down to 5 minutes and 30 five seconds here. Yeah, just giving it to the big guy. He's trying to get outside, uh, watching him on film last week. He had a lot of success, uh, not only running up the gut, but uh, on the outside, but uh, they, they had him that time. Jamal Streeter Jr. is out here wide. They fake the bubble screen. They throw the slant behind Ooh. it. Incomplete pass. Great coverage there by number four, and that's Avant Harris. So that was nice. You give the bubble look, and then you throw the slant behind that. But he threw it right into him. Uh, yeah, Streeter almost uh, saved an interception right he there. He threw, let him just a little bit too much. Option out to the left. Good pitch. Ball's on the ground. Oh, my. And it's recovered by the Tarpons. I got a good look at that one. Yes, sir. Yes, big time turnover. And that's what we talked about last week. You know, they scored 49 points, give up 56 points. But no turnovers. Now they get one tonight here. They're just running a simple option, staring down the defensive end. Oh, number 21 came in and came in and kind of on the side there, knocked it out as he was tackling them. And Charlotte, uh, with a huge turnover here, with a short field, can get easily get right back into this game here with a score. So Connor Trim, number 21, with a forced fumble, and Brayon Augustine, number 24 with the pickup recovery of the fumble. Valentino, two receivers on each side of the formation. Hands it off to the back, nowhere to go. Great play, 33, number nine. That, those same numbers we've been calling all, all night. night. Yes, yeah, there was just nowhere to go. It's a, just a simple dive, but uh, there's, there's three Three defenders, those, that, that defensive line that you were talking about earlier, how staunch they are, big and fast, uh, were, were there beating him as he handed the ball off. And Augustine now playing some running back after the fumble recovery. This time they fake it to him. They look, good pressure there. That's number oh, balls ball on the ground, it's picked up. There's that linebacker, he's at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, and tackled at the seven yard line. And that's that 54 again, and that is Grant LaBollister. Junior linebacker, Johnny on the spot. 
trying to pump. Quarterback ran right into number 98, trying to get around him. There you see him picking it up. And uh, great running for him there, but number 24. Wow. You, you run to the ball. They teach the defense to run to the ball, but yeah, he, he did a great job as an offensive guy there, saved the touchdown. Let's Correct. see what uh, let's see what uh, they're now. They're bringing it back. Yeah. Maybe they called him down. He, it, it, was, it looked to me like it his knee was very, very close to his knee being down. Maybe oh. we can get a quick replay here. Yeah, 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 here we go. Let's see if we can. Let's watch watch the quarterback. Watch his knee. Is the ball out? He's still on the body of the player. Down. Knees down Knees there. Knees down. Great call. Great camera work, guys. This time he throws it out there. Great defensive coverage, gain on the play, but that's going to stop things there. So, you know, um, Charlotte dodged a bullet. They sure did. Yes, and they they can still uh, fourth and five, four minutes left. Fourth they're and, they're going for it. Yeah, fourth and fifteen here. Ball is spotted yes, at the yes, forty-two good call. yard line. Big play here. Big play. If they don't make it, uh, Port Charlotte's going to get a short field again. 12 seconds left on the play clock. That's nice to have here. Very yeah, nice they're taking their time. Seven. They may just six, take the time out and five, think about this. Yeah. Three. That's smart. two. One. They're going to let the clock wind down, and that will be a timeout for the Tarpons. Wow. What an exchange there. And what a, for number 24, Brayon Augustine. He recovers a fumble, gets there in the backfield. He's involved in the next running play. Then he's chasing a linebacker all the way down the field on a scoop who, who and had score. 10 yards on him. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a play. And so, you know, uh, Augustine is not even listed as a running back. He's listed as safety and wide receiver, but he's having a huge night tonight for the Tarpons. It's one of those quiet nights where you do a lot of great things and it just is not going to show up in the statistics. Yeah, he, he saved a touchdown there. Uh, they, they called it later. Uh, uh, they're going to maybe need to call on him here to, to do something. Uh, this, is, this is a gutsy play for the Tarpons. They've got to make up 15 yards. Now they let 30 seconds go off to think about it. They sent out the punter, Forte. No, they are going to punt. They're going to play the field position. Let's see how he does putting this inside to 20. It's a good snap. High kick. It's going to bounce at the 15. Yeah, stay away. And it's going to stay down right there. It's going to be down there by number six, Joshua Brown, uh, the, the receiver that's had a touchdown, a couple big catches on the last series, hustle down and makes play. You know, one thing you see about high school football, you'll see the name. There may be 11 of them out there at a time, but you see – one number continues to make plays in this game on both sides of the ball, Ken. Oh, you know. yeah, yes. Uh, he has been all over. And, and yes, uh, I, I remember that pit commit uh, from two weeks ago. Yes. We called his name all night. He was a <laughs> one-man wrecking crew for Tampa Bay Tech. Eaton looks things over. Hands the ball off to the back. Nice stiff arm there. Tries to spin out of a tackle. Uh, loss of about two on the play. So the Tarpons here uh, making some progress. A really good play by number 40 there. And that number 40 is Amir Delson. Uh, he is a defensive end uh, junior out there. The Pirates taking their time on this drive. Trying to eat some clock up. Eaton rolls across the body. Great catch. And then he spins off a tackle or two. Finally driven out of bounds at the 25-yard line. It's going to be about a yard short of the first down. So they go back to their bread and butter with their pass completed. Gets that first down. Gets, gets out of bounds. It really doesn't matter. It stops the clock for a little bit longer by getting out of bounds. So uh, you may see them try to pick it up now that they've got a little bit of room to work. And, and plenty of time with a timeout. And it's the Bisaril brother, Cameron, that time making a play. And again, number six and number seven. Cameron sophomores. And, and Justin. Sophomores making plays. Are they bringing it back? I, I didn't pick up the call. 
call. Yeah, we're looking down to it's gonna be the players. That would have get to be the down over must might have been that, holding. That had to be a holding out there on the receiver blocking for him. Because it's gonna be like second, second and 20. twenty. Oh, nice little uh tunnel screen out there. And uh look kind of it looked like he was gonna set up with a bubble action, then he came down toward the linebackers, yeah. Get it to Streeter and uh, let it make plays. Had the two brothers blocking for two him out front. Two brothers blocking. Yes, you, <laughs> you keep ca calling the same names, and they're all out there together. Oh, this time he's got an open receiver. And the ball oh is my. thrown short. Oh, Pick my Anoski. goodness, it's picked off. And that is number one there, Chris McNeely, the linebacker running back safety playing <laughs> now uh, corner. This, this was a – if he throws this ball five yards farther – he is uh, hitting his head up against the goalpost. Look yep. at that. He had him beat by five yards he there, did. but the ball a little short. But what I like about that interception, he comes over the shoulder and makes a gray and gives the Tarpets new life again right at midfield here to cut this down to a, a one-score game with plenty of time left. And that is a game changer right it there. It sure is. That would be a completion for the touchdown, and that would just about put the fork in this one. But the nope. Tarpons here are still very much alive. He's looking for that little hitch and go again. This time he's, oh, big Oh, hit. ouch. Wow. Nice Huge hit there. Yeah, he's thinking about that one a little bit. Is that number nine? He's okay. We're getting a number on that. Let's watch. Trying to. Number five. five. <laughs> number five is Arante Wesley, a junior running back, playing some linebacker out there. That was wow. vicious. This time a nice run on the play by Valentino. Goes for a game. And I wanted to say special thanks on that last spot. You know, we're looking at the monitors here, trying to pick it up. Got some help, help from, from the professionals out in the pressure box behind us here. And that, that was nice. That was not a designed run, but a decent run to make it third and manageable here. Uh, Stark got to look, going to need to be looking at the clock if they can uh, move the chains here as it's winding down. Third and six. This time he looks. Oh, he slipped on that. And then the ball comes out. And it's going to be recovered by Port Charlotte. Another <laughs> another field casualty. Yes. He's right <laughs> out there in that muck right at midfield on our side of the field Terrible. here on Port Charlotte. And the ball just uh, came out. As we watch it again here. Had time to throw the ball, but he's slipping. And then it came to his feet were slipping. And then, then the ball slipped out of his hands. And, and, uh, and they short, snapped it from the short side of the field over here in that. So he had a little bit of the slippery stuff on the ball. Yes, yes. He had it on his feet. And just. And, uh, and again, they're the visiting team. So, you know, you might want to design something just a little bit to the to the north of us here. Yeah, you might want to run to the wide side wide of the side. field. This time, two backs in the backfield. They fake one out there, good blocking, then he set across. Oh, great oh, wow. play by number two. And that is Brandon uh, Creedsey, linebacker. That is a fabulous play. The, the hats off to the Charlotte secondary. They, they are making adjustments to this uh, awesome passing game and uh, getting their their defenders in the right spot to deflect the passes. He should have been. Further out, with the quarterback moving to the right like that, what a superior defensive play. This time, Bingo. a really good throw. Jumping over a defender. Down a streeter again. To the 28-yard line of Streeter Jr. Going, going to his bread and butter, do the fake on the handoff, and then just throws a dart across the middle in the zone there. Easily moves the chains. Now he looks. Throws it out there late to the boundary. Streeter again. And he has a little gain on the play of about six yards. So a nice little completion. Yeah, and he threw that off his back foot. I just love his arm strength there. He threw off, off that back foot. They're, they're going to take a timeout here. And still had enough juice on that thing to complete the play for the six-yard gain. So, so where are we, Brian? We're at about second and five. Balls on the 30, 43 seconds. They just burned their last time out. 
Uh, they're the team that's, that uh, has the freshman kicker, and it's an he's made his kicks, but it's an adventure every that's, time he kicks true. it. So they're going to need uh, another 10 or 15 yards to at least try to get into some type of field goal range, I would think, to be safe. He, uh, Coach Oach Ingham's going to go for the jugular here and be uh, would love to be up three touchdowns. So maybe they've got two or three plays that they're going to call right here. As you, great shot of uh, the head coach there, uh, born and raised here, here in the Port Charlotte area, come back home, played football at Wofford in South Carolina. Uh, but, you know, he's got two or three plays he's going to probably call here. So he's got three receivers out there to the right. This time the quarterback rolls to his left. He's got to get rid of it. He does. He just throws that one away. And really, the running no, back never got into the route. Yeah, they're they're calling. Uh, they they're thinking uh, intentional grounding. intentional grounding. But I think he might have been outside of the. And that has yeah. changed this year in high school football, I believe, because it didn't matter whether you were outside the tackle box or not. Yes. It was it it was intentional grounding. <laughs> is what it is. What it is. Yes. And I think they finally made that change this year in high school football. So 37.5, three receivers out there. Oh, nice play call. Good throw out there. He throws it wide, incomplete pass. Now outside of field goal range here, 33 seconds on the clock. What do you do, Ken Burton? Well, <laughs> you're going to go for it. You're not going to try a 42-yard field goal. If you get a first down, it's going to stop the clock. So you want to get the five yards. You're going to go with Streeter here. On the clearing, you're going to run the out and run Streeter mm -hmm. across the middle and a little cross. I think crosser. that would. I think that would work. And then, you know, you're looking at. They're taking fourth, the time. There's fourth and five. Fourth. Fifteen on the clock. Looks got him. There's a route. Great catch. First down. Well, well easy we, call. we called it. Yeah, yes. easy call. Go to, go to the guy that you completed. Ten. Oh, there's a late flag. Clock's going to stop anyway, but uh, they're going to have to think this, but. Yeah, he caught 10 passes last week for 162 yards and a touchdown. Uh, well on his way to catching another 10 tonight. Uh, th this might throw a little wrinkle in it here. Let's see what they say. Personal foul against oh, wow. the offense and against oh, the defense. Three. It's going to be offsetting after the completion of the play. It's going to be first down for Charlie. So that's just the look. That's, that's the hometown rivalry here you know they're just jawing a little bit maybe a little pushing and shoving uh tempers flaring this isn't what charlotte was hoping for so uh anyway they call them on both so first down 27 seconds plenty of time to run a lot of plays especially with this high octane offense and a uh, lot, lot of things they can do to open this play but probably not going to run the ball 20 Seconds it's running. On the they started now. the clock. They're going to run the option. Keeps it this time. And really a, a smart play there. But, uh, in, and he stops the clock. Well, no, it's now they stopped well, it now. Stop it now at 11-8. So they took their last time out, I believe. So I think maybe getting in for field, possibly field position here to kick the, the field goal. It's putting the ball on the 13-yard. And you're talking 30 yards right now. Uh, that might kind of be right where he is, the freshman kicker. He's made all of his kicks tonight, but uh, uh, every one of them has been different. But the it's second down and seven so on the marker. So you can run one play. This quarterback looks like uh, he he could he could probably you know uh, know when he needs to throw it, throw it away, you know, the, you know, and give his kicker a shot here. But to run one play, you're going to have to throw it in the end zone. You, you, you don't want it in the middle of the field. And you wonder why would you burn or squander a timeout here? I'll show you exactly why, Ken. As we look down there, you can see on the 15-yard line, and you can see in the middle of the field yeah, down there, it is sloppy. I see what you're saying. If you look at this side <laughs> in the middle of the field and on the right hash, looks very nice. Yes. So, you know, if you're going to take it, you're going to take it in the fourth quarter from this side of the field. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. 11.8. Oh, oh, it hits the lineman. Uh -oh. Ball's up in the air. Live ball. Don't catch it. Now, that should be legal receiver downfield, right? Well, you don't want to catch it because the I know, but there's the flag. There's the flag. It, it hit the offensive lineman, and he can't. It is a legal receiver downfield. Boy, that's a tough break. That there. was a tough one. And 
And, uh, they, you know, they don't practice <coughs> catching the ball, so when they see it, and they're the only ones where I'm going to catch this thing. Uh, that's just what human, human you know, you're just going to want to do that. And that one hitting right between the 55. Let, let's watch this again. It looks like, let's watch for the deflection. It's 55. Looks like he's right. throwing down the middle. Took throw of number seven. Hits right him the right head. in the helmet. Yep. 52 there. You know, some of these linemen can play all four years of high school and, and never touch the ball. So uh, maybe get two plays here, Brian. It's going to have to be two. The first one's going to have to be real quick. Ball's on the 13, so still looking at a 30-yard yeah, field goal. No more, no more time out here. Yeah, so. it's going to have to be quick. Look well, at Streeter here, who's on, a, who's on you right here on the, on that sideline camera, and now on the left side of the screen. Look for him to go. It's third down. I'm running the ball wide side of the field. That's going to stop the clock and then take your extra point or take your field goal on the other side of the field on this wet field. Run the ball to the wide but side. Do they have a timeout? They don't have a timeout. They didn't, no, but it takes forever to spot. This is third down, right? Third down, mm -hmm. seven to go, right? third and you goal. Don't make it. Clock stops. How, how's it going to the gonna stop? If they get out of bounds. No, you're going to stay in bounds. Then it'll be fourth down. So I'm saying. Oh, on a, on a pass? Yeah, just run the ball. Run the ball to the left-hand side oh, okay. to, the, to the wide okay. side of the field. Okay. And then the clock is going to expire, and then you're going to get a check, chance for that extra point. It is third down, right, Ken? Third down, yes. Okay. Two down territory. He looks at the left, throws it out there. There's Streeter. Streeter, oh. incomplete pass. Now there's the incomplete pass. So One second on the clock. Uh, well, 2.8 here officially. So... Uh, Went to the main guy there. He's a little frustrated there. Great sideline shot. So now you bring in the freshman kicker. Bring in the kicker. freshman kicker. Now so, <laughs> and it's been an adventure, but he's but he's made his kicks. 30 yards. It's makeable. It's a little dark out there. <laughs> yes, it now, is. There's a lot of shadow there. That's a little that, bit of mud out it's there. Gonna, watch, watch him play in his foot. That's going to determine if he makes it. And it's blocked. And it's going to be picked up. Run down the sideline. You don't line. want him to score. <laughs> and there's a hustle it. play. Uh, finally oh. driven down at the 47-yard line. That almost turned into a disaster there. That's what you don't want is a, a block kick where you could go up 14 points, and all of a sudden it's a one-score game. Number two there on the block for Braden Kragia. For the uh, for the block. Yeah, Bra Braden. Craig C. That's K R E J C I. And, and you know, as we talked earlier in the game, one of the keys of the game was the special teams that Coach Ingram was worried about. And, uh, that, and coming in there and blocking that kick uh, uh, nearly cost them, but uh, they were able to uh, keep them out of the end zone as we end the half. And this is a classic from what we talked about before the game. You know, last, last week, and we'll take it down and take a little break here, Ken. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for. No one can take away You're in this room. what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. We are very good at what we do. What we love most is when our customers come in with an idea, whether it be a vehicle wrap, trade show display, wall mural, floor graphic, doesn't matter what it is, and we get to run with it and make it happen. One of the most exciting products that we have to offer are our vehicle wraps because we're so good at them. It's in our name. From design to installation, you're not gonna find a better vehicle wrap. 
We treat every vehicle as its own canvas to create a design to maximize exposure for our customers. When they see it for the first time, we can tell we just nailed it. Bam! Your new vehicle wrap is going to show your customers who you are, what you do, and how to get in touch with you. We have the best installers in town, and because we're a 3M certified installation company, we use 3M products on all of our vehicle wraps, and we guarantee our installs from start to finish. So our customers walk away knowing they're getting the best service, the best products, the best material, the best installs, the best of everything. We know what we're talking about. When I drop my kids off and I see that they're on time and they've been delivered safely, it gives me a lot of personal satisfaction to have done this for the community. I would encourage anybody who is like me, retired, to look into this and consider because it really has worked for me. Start a great future with the School District of Manatee County. Apply now at manateeschools.net slash careers. In sports, we wear all types of equipment to protect ourselves from injury. One of the most important, yet neglected parts of the body are the ankles. Research shows that more than 30% of all sports injuries are ankle related. Preventing an injury is key in any sport and applies to any job where you're on your feet all day as well. Prevent Sprain socks were scientifically designed and engineered for support, stability, and performance. Stay active with PreventSprainSocks.com. Hello, this is Mike McDonald with Conley Buick GMC. The best thing about today is I don't have to apologize for not having any inventory. We have GMC Sierras. We have GMC Yukons. We have GMC Acadias. We have a great selection of GMC Terrain. Also, we have a great selection of Buick. I know you guys have all struggled with going to dealerships, looking on their lot for a brand new vehicle, and you find absolutely nothing. Look no further. Come to Conley Buick GMC, where you too will be treated like family.
children safe as we return to school. Always stop and stop school buses. And obey signals from walking guards. Remain alert. And do not use a cell phone in school zone. And remember, car seats and trial restraints only work if they're used correctly every time. Have a good fight. Get your button on the right way. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation.
inventory than any dealer in the state of Florida. Así es, Mike. El inventario más grande en el estado de Florida. Start a great future with the school district of Manatee County. Apply now at manateeschools.net slash careers. Hey, we'll get you back to the game of the week in one second. But first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Seth Varnador. I'm a former high school and college football coach. And now I cover football on a local level. I talk with a local coach each week, look at local players and the best performances from around the area, look at guys playing at the college level, and finish up each week talking about the state's college football teams. If you love football, you'll love Next Level. Check us out Wednesday at 7 on VSN Suncoast. Sharing the road is everyone's responsibility. Riders, wear protective gear, make yourself visible, and follow traffic laws. Drivers, look twice for motorcycles. Use caution when changing lanes. Motorcycles may be hard to see. And maintain four seconds of following distance. Motorcycles can slow down without activating a brake light. Find out more ways to stay safe. Share the road, Florida, and arrive alive. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, United by the cause you fight for. No one can take away Nor in this room. what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. Welcome back to the Peace River Rumble. We're here at halftime, minute 55 before we kick things off here to start the third quarter, Ken. Brian Varnador here. We really had a game, you know, st uh, started out. Port Charlotte, 21 points on the board early, and then a comeback there late in the second quarter by the Charlotte Fighting Tarpons to close things up here 21 to seven at the half. Yeah, after uh, Charlotte made some adjustments, Brian, it's kind of settled down. Uh, uh, they, they've both become a little sloppy here of late, uh, but 21 to seven, it's still anybody's game. We'll just see who uh, makes the best halftime adjustments here as uh, we we continue to uh, watch this chess game as it uh, reveals itself to us. Yeah, you know, so Ken, it was uh, a classic match up there. Uh, we thought Looks like Port Charlotte's going to go out there and just run away with this game. Yes. Some adjustments were made. Um, Charlotte Tarpons then yeah. came back, had one series, uh, impressive passing series where they were able to complete some passes and close it up uh, there as we went to the halftime break. Yeah, it looked like uh, we were going to be dealing with a running clock again this week, and uh, uh, Charlotte uh, has made, made some adjustments. Uh, uh, th this is uncharted territory for both of these teams, uh, as we stated earlier uh, in the in the last in the last 18 matchups. Charlotte has won 15 of them, and of, of the three wins that Port Charlotte has won, has been less than 10 points. So we've never seen a double-digit 
uh, Port Charlotte uh, lead in this series uh, that goes back even before that uh, when, you know, probably another 10 or 15 years before that. So uh, uh, it's been a great game. Uh, I saw a little bit of stats. Uh, the the, the uh, Charlotte, uh, Port Charlotte quarterback has thrown for 204 yards. So uh, he's the real deal. I mean, last, last week threw for over 300. Well on his way, looking again that uh, he'll probably be near 300, if not more. Uh, but uh, my, my goodness, they can score points and score points quick. And we'll get back to the twin brothers yes. there for Port Charlotte. Very impressive. Number six and number seven. You know, we it's our first time out with these young mm -hmm. men, sophomores. Uh, but probably twin brothers doing such a great job. And they continue to get bigger and bigger as the game has been going on here, Ken. Yes, they are. And uh, it's been fun to watch. Uh, you know, 10th graders out there making plays in a big game like this, too. Uh, still may come down to uh, the special teams, as we talked earlier, that uh, what, that was a concern that Port Charlotte had so far. Hasn't been an issue where it's made an impact in the game, but uh, still, uh, you know, Port Charlotte with the freshman kicker and uh, Charlotte with the, with the veteran. Here's that freshman kicker. Talking about another high pooch kick, and it's going to be muffed there initially, and then taken by that junior there. That's number 17. You know, Ken, and he's a nice look at Trent Curlis. He is a soft uh, freshman wide receiver there, and he's someone we've seen out in the formation. He's a very good looking receiver. But the, you know, there's another pooch kick, and there's your there's your field position we talked about earlier, Ken. So they're going to start this one at their own 39, which is really good uh, yeah, starting yeah. field position. What, what, what the Fighting Tarpons need to do is to come out and uh, get, get, in, get back in this game with a score to cut it down to one. And then we've got a real ball game here. Valentino tries to draw those Pirates offsides, unable to do so. Looks like he's got... Brian Augustin in the backfield with him again. This time he hands it off, bouncing off a tackle or two, but just able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Another good play by the defensive line there. And that again was number 24, which was Brian Augustin. Yes, we've called his game, called his name a lot tonight. Uh, defensive line has, has uh, probably been one of the big factors, uh, that why, also why there's a 14 point lead. Throws the out out there, little bubble screen, going to go for a gain of about eight yards on the play. And when Charlotte has had success, when you were talking about the one drive, they were able to get a couple quick passes, which opened up the running game. And uh, so now they have a, a third and manageable here. See if they can uh, move it. Third and three. Valentino looks up, throws it out there wide. First down on the play. So a nice little play there. Ball is going to be spotted at the 46-yard line. So the Tarpons are driving. Yeah, Valentino still running for his life. Uh, he's getting a lot of pressure, but uh, knew right where he was going. Uh, receiver right there at the chains for the first down. This time he's looking, throw it. He throws it out there late. Looks like we're going to have illegal, ineligible uh, lineman downfield Number as well. Number 71. We yeah, yeah, good pickup on that. Uh, yeah, as you said earlier, they give him an, uh, a yard, yard and a half, but he he was definitely out there. He could have almost caught that pass. Yeah, he was near the first down marker out there, about seven yards down Let's the field. Let's see if we can point him out here, too. Oh, no, we're getting back to the live. Ten minutes and 51 seconds here in the third quarter. Now they're going to mark this one off. So the ball will be downed at the 47-yard line. First down and 15. Two receivers on both sides of the formation. Valentino looks, scrambles out there, throws the ball's tipped, an incomplete pass. And you can see out there, number 15, <laughs> Luke uh, Wadsworth struggling out there in the muck trying to <laughs> yeah he has no 
No chance again. That's a home field advantage for the Pirates. Uh, uh, he just can't. It's like quicksand out there. Brian. Yeah, just know where it's to go. It's just uh, really hard to deal with. And the faster you try to get out of there, the worse it gets. And this time, two receivers on both sides of the field. Valentino looks, rolls to his left, throws it back over the middle. Wide receiver is open. Nice completion down to the 36-yard line. So nice positive play. Yeah, and a much-needed one. And he let the receiver clear the muck and then threw it between the two defenders to uh, move the chains. Just enough for the first down yeah, Absolutely. There, so two receivers on both sides of the formation. Big back in the backfield is Brian Augustine back there. Valentino looks around the field, looking out to his receiver, slot receiver on the right side, hands it off to Augustine. No where going. He goes for about a one and a half, two yard gain. Yeah, still trying to establish that run here. It's going to be important as uh, we play down this second half. Running in that muck also doesn't help. Uh, just running into that stout defensive line here, number 97. Uh, King King Justice. King Justice. What a great football name. What a name for a defensive tackle. <laughs> King Justice awaits in the middle of the field. <laughs> Love it. Valentino, now he's got a lot of room to run, but he throws the long ball down there. It's gonna be 50, and it's going to be... Incomplete pass. You know, a great job by both the receiver and the defensive back over there. No penalties on the play. Yeah, rolling out to the right. First, he's looking to the left, rolling out to the right. And, uh, hey, I'm just going to chuck this thing up, 50-50 ball. Good yeah. to take a chance. This, uh, will, uh, and uh, great, great job by uh, both the defender and the receiver there. Looked like he could have picked that one up with his feet. Uh, just run to that yes. first, first down yes. marker. He's kind of uncontested there as he went around the corner. Brings up a third and nine. Now he looks, throws it out there, and wide Ooh, and incomplete pass. Now that'll bring up a fourth and nine. Ball is spotted right at the 37-yard line. Looks like a punting situation. Yeah, they're still out there. Uh, he had his receiver open there on a on a down and out. Right, right there at the, the, the first down marker, but uh, just let him just a little bit. So uh, he's had time to throw these last two plays. Th that one on that pass and on the long ball, uh, rolling out to the right in the good on the good part of the field. He's had time to throw. Wadsworth and Brown are out there wide to the right. He looks left, tries to step up into the pocket. Now he rolls, takes a big hit. And the ball is caught. And the helmet, helmet goes off the player, but that's bringing up a first down. And that was number 14, which was Daryl Owens, the junior, with a big completion. What I liked about the quarterback there was uh, he he still threw the ball. He knew where the line of scrimmage was. He could he almost like he was going to have to run, but he knew he had a little bit of time left uh, behind the line of scrimmage to, to throw that slant and threaded the needle there. So a big play for the Tarpons there as they move the chains, and they're almost uh, – Inside the red zone, Brian. Yeah, and a big uh, injury for the second there. That's 98, which is Samuel Luther, the big junior defensive lineman. Looks like they're trying to adjust a snap there on the helmet, uh, but he's unable to be in there on this play. 9-18 on the clock here in the third quarter. One single back in the backfield. That's going to be Chris McNeely, the wide receiver in the backfield now. They fake the handoff. Quarterback keeper takes a big hit there and that was looked like they slipped in there with the, the Tyshawn Presley linebacker running back got in there for one play too. So the quarterback decides to keep the ball and running on the right side uh, uh, not a blazer but uh, decent yardage there as they get the first so that's second and seven. Second and seven Tyshawn Presley uh, moving the ball to the inside there. Nice gain on the play. It's going to be about a yard and a half short of the first down marker. So, so something here, they can. there's a lot of options in the playbook here, so it'll be interesting to see what the Tarpets dial up here. Uh, definitely two down territory. Yeah, didn't, they said his knee was down, uh, so that brings up the third and three here. Tyshawn Presley. Rolls to his right, being harassed by that linebacker, throws it out there, dropped, incomplete pass. 
Good pressure by the linebacker, but that's just a drop ball, Ken. Yes, and the quarterback throwing it off his back leg there. Uh, run, run, running for his life, that linebacker uh, chasing him right there. Uh, you just got to watch it all the way in. So uh, fourth and four, and I don't see the kicker out there. Yeah, Grant uh, LaBallister has had a great game, linebacker 54. Quarterback out there, number Tyson Presley, number eight. Looks, now he rolls, and he's gonna be tackled, sacked. He will not make it, so that's gonna be a turnover on downs. Poor Charlotte ball as the poor Charlotte fans are loving it here in front of us, Ken. Yeah, they're playing Ben don't break. You know, they've only given up seven points all night just on that one drive in the second quarter. Uh, uh, last time when they needed the conversion, the quarterback was able to slip a pass in at the last second to thread the needle, and it just wasn't there this time. So um, nice drive, but uh, zero points out of it, and, and uh, we get to see uh, Port Charlotte for the first time in the second half. And there's that defensive back, Brayan Augustine, back there in a single high safety. It'll be interesting the matchup with Jamal Streeter out there. They throw it out there, and Streeter got, has the ball, steps up. They try to rip it away, but he goes for a gain to the 20-yard line. So it's going to be about five yards short of the first down. Positive yards on first down is always a, a great thing. Streeter is, uh, if I can pull his stats, uh, he's caught quite a few passes already. And again, as we said last week, had 10. And that's one of those you could almost see it coming. Boy, there's a nice run. Uh, it goes for a gain of about three on the play. Uh, it's going to be right at the marker. There's the first down. Great run great, there. Great effort. He He's almost bear crawling his way through the first down there. Uh, just nowhere to go, but just enough to, to nudge forward to move the chains, which is the most important thing. Ed Guerrier once again, big play after big play tonight. Streeter in motion, hands it off to Guerrier, looking for a crease. Not much there, but he goes for a gain of about three yards on the play. Three yards and a, and a cloud of muck or a cloud of dust, whatever you <laughs> want to call it, but... Uh, Again, positive yardage keeps the playbook open to do a lot of things as, as they're uh, marching down the field, Brian. 6.54 on the clock here in the third. One single back. Toss, Gertier. Big, big run. Hits the edge. And he goes out of bounds at the 49 yard. Well, they're going to call him out at the 46 yard line, Ken. But the most important thing is they just changed the offense a little bit. Hey, just give it give it to your back on the outside. And they had a nice little hole for them and a great north-south runner and carrying two people out of bounds, moving the chains there near the midfield mark. Watch the H-back over here to the right side of the formation. They follow him, then they throw it right to Ooh. him. And that's the play we saw <laughs> earlier and kind of felt that one coming. That was Cameron Bersiril again. Yes, and he he was open. They kind of set those play that play up with the the runs, and it was open. Quarterback just let him just a little bit where I couldn't quite get it, but nice play call. We are at the perfect. We've seen that formation twice, and at the break, at the snap of the ball, we were saying that is open. You could see it. It looked that that open, and uh, one for two on that uh, completion on that particular play call. This time. <laughs> <laughs> the Tarpons are all over it. Number 21 coming up to make a play. Connor Trim. Yeah, they're, they, they're running the option there, but there was no option. Uh, they, they sent the house that time, and they timed it just right. At, uh, uh, one of the few losses that they've had tonight. So brings up a third and 15. Wide here to the right is number three, which is Jamal Streeter, Jr., along with number six, which is Cameron Brasserol, and number seven out there too. So 6.04 on the clock. Uh, Port Charlotte leads this one 21 to seven over the Tarpons. A shout, a shout out tonight to Godson's Pizza. Oh man. Oh, it was nice going down halftime and uh, having some pizza. They're located uh, the old Demetrio's Pizza House on Cortez Road in 
in uh, Bradenton there. Thank you guys uh, for uh, the pizza tonight uh, for the crew here. It's uh, been kept, keeping us fed and and uh, just, just a great place to go uh, have dinner with the family. And uh, they've got the game up there at the restaurant tonight watching back in Bradenton. That's great. And a great pick up there by Ken Burton Jr. there. Uh, excellent. And the tip for tonight, Ken, don't bet on the horses. That's what I got for you tonight. <laughs> 604 on the clock. Eaton rolls. Steps up. Throws it back across the grain. First down. And that's a great play. That's going to be a first down. Let's see where they spot this. Right in front of us. Forward progress stops. Uh, what can You can't say enough about the quarterback play. Uh, you know, just a, another great play by Eaton. What I like about that, he's, he's right there in the muck on the field, and he's throwing across his body, and that's a hard throw, but uh, kept, kept his eyes down the field and gets the first down. Hands it off to Gutierre, and he goes for no gain, but a little bit of ball control here now. Five minutes and 35 seconds on the clock currently. 25 on the play clock. So we have a stoppage of play here, Ken. Yeah, it looked like uh, they were going back to well, to their um, no huddle offense here, but the, the timeout here, uh, they're going to stop and think. For a little it. water break here. Yeah, water break, yeah. This August, we want you to remember to keep children safe as we return to school. Always stop and stop the school buses. And obey signals from walking guards. Remain alert. And do not use a cell phone in school zone. And remember, car seats and triangle restraints only work if they're used correctly every time. Have a good fight. Get your buttons on the right way. Goodyear runs to the middle of the field, only a gain of about a yard on the play. It's going to bring up a third, and we'll call it seven. Yeah, the Tarpons are making great calls um, defensively. Just nowhere to, to run for, for the uh, Pirates, put, putting them in a third and long here. They're struggling a bit late, Brian. They've been, they've been moving down the field all night, but struggling now. Eaton moves players over left to right. Now he looks, throws the ball out there late. He's got a receiver, tries to break a tackle, does, lunges forward. And he's going to be just short of the first down by about a yard. So I think that you'll see Port Charlotte line up and go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, Kim. absolutely. With this second effort, it goes from maybe being a punt to where they're going to go for it, and they're going to go here on the ball real quick. Great Justin, effort. Justin Burrisill. And now this time, a great run, first down. And you always got to remember that you got somebody's got to account for the quarterback, but unfortunately that time nobody did, and he just uh, went straight ahead right through an open hole for an easy first down. Bryce Eaton with a great play. Oh, good handoff there. Back's got it, running hard, low, all the way down to the seven-yard line. That's number 16, Julius Roach. The sophomore. Yeah, what what a great change of pace back. He's just a little guy, he's a little scat back, and uh, he was already in the second and third level before they figured out he had the ball. Yeah, that's the second run like that where he's jumped in there and, and you know, he's clipping off for like 15 to 18 yards per carry when he gets in there and he gets his shot and he's showing elusive speed. So another timeout here, I think, I'm not sure who called it, but uh, they're, Thinking things over, I know uh, for Charlotte, they do not want to get down three scores late here in the third quarter, so they have got to figure out some way to slow down the, the uh, Pirates and keep them out of the end zone. You know, tonight, uh, it's a long game. There's been a lot of running first downs. Uh, the clock is only at 4.09 here in the third quarter, but down here with these teams from from the sun coast of Florida, the kind of south down here, you know, in this region, conditioning, 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 no cramps on the field for so either far, side. Yes, yes, good observation. There's that running back, Roche again, 
is in for six. Yeah, just running off the left side of the line uh, as we watch this again. Great blank blocking. Watch the, off the left side. Watch 52 and 50. Oh, nice. Yeah, and just, uh, just jumping to the outside there, basically running in untouched. Uh, maybe not quite the dog, dagger yet, but uh, three, three, three score leads is looking good for the Pirates right now. First row will hold this one nice. Well, it's a high snap. Kick is up, and it is good. The freshman strikes again. Uh, it's Carson Berghausen, and you know we have seen him. He's really developing tonight, Ken. Right? It's oh, his freshman. Oh yeah. At, you know, to be 14 year old at 15 at most. Uh, you know, and he probably grew up. You know, around here, coming to these games and. Uh, now he's here on the big stage, and uh, you know the game may come down to him. You always got to be ready for that, and uh, uh, he, he's he's done his job. And and uh, special teams has has not been uh, a deciding factor that where it has hurt hurt Braden River tonight. Where last week it was a struggle, so they they've made good adjustments, and and he's played a good game, uh, not setting the world on fire, but. Uh, he, he's doing his job, so great job for for the freshman. So really, you know, and think about the experience that he's gained in these last two games. You know, from going, uh, it's incredible amount that he's picked up now. Uh, there, he's going to be kicking off. There was a penalty on the play, so he's going to get a, a fortunate break here. He's going to get the kick off from the opposition 45. And your observation is good. You got to remember, they scored 49 last week, and they're at 28. You know he's kicked enough to kick for half a season. That's so true. This, this is great for the for the freshman. Now I hope they would do something different here in the kickoff. That I don't doesn't look like they're going to do it, but uh, uh, what they're doing is working. I would pin him inside. Mm. Go the, the other way. Yeah, to the four they're, or five. They're moving line. up. Not that way. Now he might kick this one out of bounds, and it does trickle out of bounds. Just so out penalty. of bounds. So that's 30 yards from the kickoff, so they can take it at the 30 yard line or if it's before that they can they can uh, take it take it right there yeah i would like to see him punch that one down there to the right side of the field just just a change of pace just a little change yeah, just of pace. to g give them a little more uh challenge them a little bit i'm sure they they practice this a lot but they practice or, and they may they may not want to show something too you just you just never know and he may have been looking for a little wet spot over there, and he just missed it by half mm -hmm. a foot. Absolutely. You know, because it just trickled off the field over there. And you could see on this side of the field in much better condition than the other side of the field. You know, we came in there tonight to the press box. There was obviously a Port Charlotte versus Venice JV game here last night, right, Ken? Yes, yes. Okay, so there was some. there's been some fresh... Uh, yeah, football. We saw the, yeah, we saw the rosters. Like those aren't our. That's not our game. But uh, yeah, and that's that's probably hasn't helped the field out here that they had that game last night. So now we're trying to figure out where to spot it. They're going to spot it on the 25. I'm, I'm going to go 15 yard line. Let's see what we got. Here. No. So did he? Where did he kick the ball off? He kicked it from the opposition 45. Okay. So, so that would be the fifth. So he started, uh, they're the starting on 20. 20. Okay. So maybe it's 25 yards. Valentino looks, running for the sideline, being chased. A great chase by that defensive <laughs> lineman. I'm going to have to look on our screen here. You get a better vantage point here. But that was a big lineman running extremely 33. So number 33 there. And then. Oh, but, yeah. It looked like. There was a flag that just popped, but it looked like maybe 99 might have pushed him after he'd been out of bounds. Let's see what they call. There was a flag that just, uh, yeah, 33 is a big guy. 33, and then Tyrell Luther, number 99 over there. Yeah, there's, a, there's a flag over on the other side of the field on about the 25. Tell you what, they got some defensive line here, you know, as they're rotating in here. Uh, you know, not sizes are not listed here on the roster, but Dar uh, Dardeski Dusselme, a junior defensive lineman, 
uh, just checked into the game number 32. And he looks like he's another 265, 270 pounds. And, you know, from what we've seen with Palmetto over the years, we, we know Port Charlotte can score points. But if you have a defensive line that can carry you and you can rotate players in and wear them down, that's going to play well. They're, they're only class 3S, so uh, uh, that, that could be that could play big into them as the season progresses and, and being a potential playoff team. That's a great point. After this play, I'll get back to that, Ken, because that was exactly what I was thinking about in my mind. We're actually witnessing another one of those 8 to 10-man uh, rotations on the defensive yes. line, and tonight it is with Port Charlotte. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a it's not a five-man rotation in here at all. It's twice that. Good point, Ken. And when you have that, uh, in, great in things high, happen. <laughs> if you great were, things happen. The guys <laughs> with great defensive <laughs> lines and great offensive lines. The, Make a lot of skilled guys the, look very the, yeah, good. Yeah, the right? linebackers are, are getting a lot of tackles. Getting this, and the, the secondaries are getting the, the pick six because all they have to do is rush four guys. And you can you can make a defensive coordinator just look like like a, like, a, like he really knows what he's doing. You know, he can't do any. He makes every call right. Right. <laughs> and then if you can get there with three. Uh -huh. you, the world you you own the world, which is uh, something that this defense can do. They line they line up. It looks like they're playing a lot of four three tonight. Uh, but you know we have seen some um, on obvious passing plays. We've seen some three man fronts, and they're still getting there here. Uh, Port Charlotte and, and they haven't blitzed a lot. They I think we've we've noticed a couple of times, but they're they're doing it doing it fine with uh, with uh, whatever alignment they have on the front. So 353 on the clock here. And this one. It's still showing first down. So they're going to, is that an offsetting? Yeah. I always love when they, they walk backwards and then they walk forward. Why, they, you know, they can subtract one from the other <laughs> and just net it. But uh, maybe they just like being on TV. <laughs> Isn't that what he did? Yeah. You could see uh, the frustration with Coach Ingram on the sideline there. He's one of the nicest guys. Oh, yeah. And, what, and, what a joy. And, yeah. uh, we've, had, the, we've had we've done their games a couple of times, and uh, he, we spoke to him before the game. He, sp he looked for us. Did, uh, we'll talk about that after this mm -hmm. play. Second and three, and the quarterback looks things over. And, you know, they're going back to Valentino this time. Two receivers in the formation on each side of the formation. This time he looks long, throws it out there, and the ball is oh. dropped. First down, easy completion, dropped ball. Brings up a fourth and three. Yeah, how, how unfortunate. Quarterback looked over his progressions, nothing there, and looked for the safety valve and uh, hits him right in the gut and just doesn't come up with it. They would have had the first down. So what are they going to do? Well, Looks like uh, they are going for it on their own. But it, it shows third on the marker over there. Yes, Ken. you're third true. On the marker, they got so. two downs. Yeah, so they had changed it a little earlier and flipped it back. So oh, it looks across his body, incomplete pass. Now it brings up an interesting Now they got to figure out what to do. Yeah, that play was going nowhere. He just uh, had too much momentum to try to throw that back against the grain. Receiver was there, but uh, there was just uh, uh, got one of those big defensive players chasing you. It doesn't help. Here you have fourth down. You know, obviously, option one is to draw Port Charlotte offside. So that's, yes. you know, if you can get away with that, 15 that's great. on the clock. Clock winds down. 10. Throws the ball out there. Oh. Great catch on a low throw. And so. He's it looked like first he had down. to get down there and really scoop that thing up, get a better vantage point on the replay here. Just to, uh, yeah, got it. That was a clutch play Ooh, there. Very clutch. Gutsy. So good things happening here. Third and 30, or three minutes, 35 seconds. Great spinning run there. Gain of about seven on the play. And, and that's number 21 is uh, Connor Trim, the linebacker running and, back. And as we've seen all night, when they're able to throw the ball, 
effectively, it opens up the offense and the rest, the rest of the offense. There's Trim again this time. He stood up, and there's that big defensive tackle again. And no, it's the DN, number, number 11. 11, Samuel Clergusty. Yeah, you see him coming from the outside and just uh, uh, breaking, breaking right there uh, for the back. He had no chance. And Desmond Hugh there, number nine, kind of jamming things up there too. Third and two here, 250 on the clock. Valentino looks, rolls right, steps up, and he's got nowhere to go. So that'll bring up a fourth down, Ken. Fourth yeah, yes. and more than five. It seems like when they can get things going, uh, th then they struggle. They're just It's just hard, to, uh, again, when you've got a fresh defensive line. You've talked about it, Brian, early pointing it out. Now they're rotating. They're fresh. So uh, they're just pinning their ears back, and this is another clutch play. Do not jump offside. Uh, Port Charlotte here gets a good snap. Boy, free rush there. Now he rolls out to his left, looks, throws across his body, wide open receiver, catches it. Ball is down at the 40, let's call it the 36 yard line. Great play. Another clutch fourth down play. For me, if the quarterback, when, when, that, when the defensive lineman slipped, he had a whole bunch of daylight in front of him, but still made a great pass. Uh, catch, move the chains. And Augustine. Uh, very impressive here. Number 24, Brian Augustine again. This time he throws it out there, and that's going to be another first down on the play. And there's that number again, Ken. Looks like Augustine one more time. So they struggle, and then they're great. They struggle, and they're great. And, uh, again, if, if they make it and score, it's going to come down to those two fourth down conversions, and they're going to sit, sit and talk about this a little bit. Somebody called a timeout. Minute 52 remaining here in the third quarter. You get a nice look at the stadium here at the Cove, at located the Cove. in Port Charlotte, one of yes. our favorite places. Favorite place. The Pirates. <laughs> and uh, there is a packed house. There, it's full on both sides. There are people in the end zone. There's the band in the uh, wet east end zone from Charlotte where they have temporary bleachers. I mean, there, there's a lot of people here tonight. As you can see uh, yeah, on cue, you're getting that Jason Boone camera shot where we're getting the views of people standing in the end zones. Now, these are people that are that, that are that are standing on top of the soccer stands, turning around, looking at the football field. They got a great shot there. Oh, that is a low snap. And that one was on the ground. So you watch that one, Ken. That was an interesting looking wrinkle there. Looked like the ball just didn't get back there from the center. Yeah, and that, that's unfortunate. You know, uh, th they've only scored seven points tonight. They only scored three. And you you want to have a good first down. And uh, when you don't have a good exchange, and again, it's a, it's a mucky field out there, uh, they, they're going to have to pick up the difference here on this play. Valentino looks, steps up to the right. Breaks a tackle, shows a little speed, goes for a nice gain on the play. And Valentino is looking better and better, more comfortable, more willing as a runner as the night goes he, on. He's had to be. He's been running for his life all <laughs> night. Look at him. If you just watch the replay, he, he dodged three billets, and, and, he, and he found a little bit of daylight there. And as you said, saw a little bit of uh, speed that we haven't seen tonight. He, he, can, he can definitely, uh, he, and this is, again, it's going to help keep keep uh, keep this drive alive he's definitely a throw first he keeps his eyes looking down the field he wants to throw but you can see he has pretty good speed now slipping out of the cut is the receiver he had brown out there brown sat down in his break and unfortunately just slipped on his uh coming out of his break it was either brown or augustine but that was a that was a shame because it was a nice play call, a good route, but the receiver just slipped coming out of the cut. Yeah, just uh, still managed to short gain. The more uh, conservative uh, choice there, positive yards, keep the drive alive. So fourth down. Valentino looks, rolls to his right, all the way to the sideline, throws it late across his body. It's going to be incomplete pass. So that's a turnover on down, so Port Charlotte ball. And another, uh, well, we talk about the Port Charlotte defense, another bend but don't break defense. 
of effort tonight. And uh, uh, Charlotte is, is making they're, – they're, they're making good drives, but they just cannot finish. It seems like when they just get down there – uh, getting ready to score, they just can't. They just cannot finish the drive. So Port Charlotte gets the ball back here, right here at the tail end of the third quarter, with an opportunity to finish off the the Tarpons. We still got another quarter to play, though. Yeah, this should be the last play of the first quarter here. Eaton looks, hands the ball off. Oh, nice breaking a cut, <laughs> driving forward. Very close to the first down. That man again, Ed Guerrier. Yeah, there was nowhere to go. And uh, number two there, Braden, I can't pronounce Kredgy, uh, safe touchdown. So oh, and they get the playoff before the end of the quarter. <laughs> I don't know what the rush is for Port Charlotte here. A small gain on the play. I yeah, I, I was, I was, yeah, I was a little surprised there, but uh, regardless, uh, end of the third quarter. You know, when you're you got, uh, here uh, with the school district of Manatee County uh, sponsored game, we'll go to a break. Searching for meaning in a relentless world, always connected, but somehow alone, trapped by illusion. We offer another path where the battle to belong begins. Awakened by a calling, united by the cause you fight for, no one can take away what it means to be among the few, the proud, the Marines. We are very good at what we do. What we love most is when our customers come in with an idea, whether it be a vehicle wrap, trade show display, wall mural, floor graphic, doesn't matter what it is, and we get to run with it and make it happen. One of the most exciting products that we have to offer are our vehicles. Great sponsor, now that's a wrap here, opening up the beginning of the fourth quarter. And this time, a run. Very nice play by Eaton. First down and more. Down the sideline, all the way to the 45-yard line before he steps out of bounds, Ken. Yes, uh, great call by Coach Ingham. Uh, just a quarterback keeper on the right side. You know, you, you expect him to hand it off. You know, as you said earlier, last week he rushed for 40 or 50 yards. He's had probably about that again tonight just to keep that defense honest here. Now here at first and 10, I think he's probably going to go back to that big option, which is Ed Guerrier, number two, that big single running back. He's got three wide receivers out here wide to the left side of the formation. Hands all the ball to big Ed G driving forward <laughs> for the first down. Yeah, they're hanging on for dear life, and I think we're going to see a heavy dose of him from uh, the rest. Of the one, two, three. Four, five of them, and uh, he, he's got to be close to 100 yards, if not already. I never thought that one was coming like that one went down. 11:38. He's got the ball again, driving forward, bounces it out to the left. She get, gets the edge, looks to set up a stiff arm. Now he runs over a defender and runs tackled at the 15-yard line. Yeah, yeah, great run. Uh, we saw him last week. He's got decent speed to get to the outside. There was nowhere to go. They had him wrapped up. Hey, I'll just go outside. Uh, great block there by number three. And uh, I'm going to make oh. you, if you're going to tackle me, you're going to pay for it. Ed, it's E D D. D he uh, just, uh, Ed D. Just, just tried to destroy G, the running machine. Goodness. He is really uh, showing. He's getting stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Now they put him in the minute of running back. She's got some great skills, and that's number 16. Once again, Julius Roach in there. Another great run of about six yards on the play. And, and they've used him tonight, too. A great change of pace back. You know, kind of reminds me of the Warwick Dunn and, and the Mike Allstott with the Bucks back in the days of the Super Bowl with the time with the Buccaneers. Uh, you know, just tough for a defensive team to, to keep up with. Oh, good cut there. And yeah, Roche drives it. forward again. 
a nice gain on the play on a play that really shouldn't have gone anywhere. Gain a couple yards. So should have walked third yes. and four. You, you said so right there. This play had negative yardage all over it. They had him wrapped up. And, you know, they're just wearing down the, the Charlotte defense and uh, gets positive yards. Eaton keeps this one, drives to the middle of the field, driving forward. It's going to be tackled. A uh, gain of about two on the play brings up uh, fourth and two. Big play here, Ken. 10 15 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and again, a quarterback keeper. We've seen a lot of success with that tonight. Uh, looks like they're going to go for it here, Brian. And, and why not? Yeah, Eaton should have been a little bit tighter up on 52. Had a great block. Oh, Jump. there's your offsides. There's your first down for the Port Charlotte Pirates. A killer 10 on the clock. 10 0 0 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. So this is getting them into where they can punch this thing in. Great shot here by a crew. Oh, inside handoff, Easy. and he is in for six, is Julius Roach. Tell you yeah, what. Yeah, they just let him finish out the drive and uh, just uh, they, they're just going to wear him down, run, running it straight ahead and see if you can stop us. 34 to 7. And that was Ed oh, they Guerriere. Brought him, they brought, so they him, brought him back in to finish it up. But he made a jump cut there, reminded you of a smaller back. <laughs> he's, he's a very, he's a talent. Now the freshman will come in once again. Snap good. is down, the kick is up, and it is no good off to the right. So 9.46 on the clock, Port Charlotte with a 34 to seven lead. You know, Brian, uh, Port Charlotte has only beaten the Tarpons three times uh, in the Max Prep era going back to 2004. In 2007 was the first win, 28 to 19, a nine point difference. That was that Charlotte. In 2013, they won here 33 to 28 by a five point margin. And then the last victory in 2019, they beat Port Charlotte 24 to 20 at Charlotte, a four point margin. This, this is a record setting win for this program against their arch rival nor, uh, south of us, the Tarpons. So the freshman, you know, he's getting a lot of legwork here. You know, he comes into the program here at Port Charlotte. You know, we've <laughs> seen them over the years play a lot of running games, heavy running, closer games. Yes. But a winning program. We've seen them go 10 and 2 and, and things yes. like that over the year. But this kicker, the freshman, he's getting a lot of mileage in. Wow. Very, now this is a very short kick. It's going to be fielded there. Oh, big hit, and there's that DB once again. Number 15. Number 15, he made a play earlier in the game, and that's Aaron Brown, senior defensive back. Fearless. Bang. Bang. Wow. You know, I think he lines up right next to the kicker, and, you know, he didn't kick it far, but enough to get a running start and just pummel the, the returner guy there. Shoulder and helmet right on the ball. Yes. A clean hit, but the, a lot of times the ball comes flying out of there with that perfect of a hit. And now you yeah, see that. Yeah, it should have. It should have. You see the look that we have now. We're looking at the monitor here, the big offensive line for the Tarpons coming out here. Let's see what they have left in the tank. Uh, that's a big group down there, Ken. Valentino. 11 out there. Two receivers on each side of the formation. Fakes the handoff. Now he's going to be smothered back there in the backfield. Breaks the tackle initially. And then no gain on the play. He's tackled at the 30. And that's going to be a loss of 13 on the play, Ken. Yeah, it looked like a busted play. Well, no, he was keeping. And, uh, they, you know, they're just uh, fresh. And they've got their ears pinned back. And uh, there's just no, nowhere to go. Blitz in the linebacker. There's that 54 yes. and again. He's the one that picked it up and almost scored the touchdown to take Rob. Yeah, Grant Ballister. He's had a great game. Tonight. Great game tonight. Long hair. He looks flowing. apart. He yeah. looks just like a linebacker. Nine and one. Now they're 
they're going with hitch and go. They throw it the other side, long throw over there to the freshman. Great speed. And there's a look at the future right there. He's down at the 45. But that's it. I talked about him earlier, Ken, number 14. And that's Daryl Owens. Daryl Owens, yes, you did. And what I liked. Uh, uh, he's a junior. He's but, a junior, but he went and sat in the zone right there where he knew the quarterback could get the ball to him. And that was a long throw across the field, but uh, a great one. And he's almost a mirror image from number 17 across the field. They look identical. This time a big run. He's there at the 30, the 20, the 10, 5. Touchdown. And really great run there by Chris McNeely. Wide receiver comes into the slot back position. They sneak him in there. Big touchdown run on the play. So obviously a breakdown on the defense. Uh, other, other than somebody trying to arm tackle, he runs untouched in, in a much needed score for the Tarpons. So there's still a little bit of light here, Brian. It's so that, not over yet. Great run there. Great call. 45 yard rushing touchdown for Chris McNeely. Now the powerful leg kicker, Thomas Forte. And they're going to snap this one back to Braden Crutchell. And we only have 10 out on the field again. Okay, the long snapper is now is that big tight end, Cale Newton. He's going to fire it back there. Cale with, oh, what a shot. it looks like they've got one. They still had one, two, three, four. That's like seven, eight. Ten. Check out the drone shot there. You can walk. Yeah, that, that's an interesting. Uh, we couldn't get 11 on the field there. So you and take so delay a game. Yeah, you take the penalty. It's not yeah. usually should not make a difference at the high school level. This guy's a, got a great leg and he's a senior. It's not going to shouldn't impact him. Newton with a snap. Good one. Hold is good, and the kick is beautiful. Great hold there by Braden Cratchel, and then the kick uh, again by Thomas Forte, the senior, drives that one through. So now, with eight minutes and 40 seconds, uh, it's a 34 to 14 score, Port Charlotte in the lead. So what? What are we, is it? Time to onside kick. You got a senior kicker. You're down 20 points, 840. It's it's hard to see. Well, they're they're talking about it over there, on the far sideline. The Tarpons, uh, uh, Port Charlotte's lining up uh, in a in a regular kick return. So it'll be interesting to see what if they try to do this or not. Boy, if it was from the 35, and they were going to be kicking over here to the 45, it's there. It's there, but the high school kicking from the 40. No. If you okay, get if you get a huddle. 10, a lot, a lot of times when they do that, they may just turn the kicker will turn around and uh, run kick it, and they'll they'll go right after one, the two guys right there on the the logo in the field. Uh, well, it looks like he's going to kick it away. Call of athletes on the right side of the field if he's going to do an onside kick. This time Forte drives it, just a hard kick towards the boundary. Out of bounds. It's he didn't want to do that. He definitely didn't want to do that. Kicks it onto the track and uh, goes past lane eight over there. Definitely oh, wow. didn't want to do that. I don't think that was planned. So there's the call. So, so you could, they're going to take the ball. They're not going to let him kick it. Again. No. So, so 840, there's a lot of time left in lot, this game. Yeah, a lot of time. A lot just, of time left in the game. That one was just, he just didn't hit that one cleanly. He's trying to drive it down there and just, you know, I'm not a kicker, so I don't understand how they. Uh, you have some 15 extra yards of field position. Inside handoff, there's Ed G to the middle for a gain of 20 yards. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I think we're going to see a, a lot of this all the way till the end. Uh, they're just going to uh, churn, churn this one out and run that clock. You know, clock stops here with the first down, but uh, heavy dose of the running back. Ed Guerriere, again, big running tonight. You know, last week over 200 yards rushing, mm -hmm. and this week, Another very productive game. 
Got it again, bounces outside to the left, big stiff oh, arm. Nice stiff and he goes for a gain of about three on the play. Yeah, we've seen plays like that tonight where he's broken those for the long run. The best thing about this play is you watch here is the stiff arm, bam, right in the face mask, uh, but uh, just a short gain. But, but positive yardage, which right now, that's all they're looking for, Brian. That clock is winding, seven minutes and 40. A little bit of a rush here. You know, I think Port Charlotte will learn. There's still 18 seconds. They'll learn as the season progresses here how to move that clock mm -hmm. down a little bit. Now inside of 10 seconds. There, there. there you go. And uh, down to seven. This time they hand it off. And Ed G takes it, spins, pirouettes, and he's going to go for no gain on the play. But even at that, you know, he has two great pirouette moves. Uh, runs the ball wide, keeps that clock going, Ken. Yeah, the uh, wow. It looks like uh, 55. The linebacker just jump, jump the, jump the lineman there and uh, hit hit him as he handed the ball off to disrupt that play. We we'll see if they go to one of the Bissarell brothers out there, number six or number seven, the the sophomores, uh, Justice or Cameron. A lot of weapons. They've gone to that, and also out there wide is Jamal Streeter Jr. He's been quiet of late, but uh, not, you're not going to. They don't need to throw to him. I'd run one of the brothers underneath, and then run Jamal to the slant again. Now we got a timeout there. Coach jo Jordan Ingman wants to think things over here. So with six minutes and 44 seconds here in the fourth quarter, we've got a timeout for Port Charlotte. You know, Brian, I don't think uh, Coach uh, saw something he didn't like. Uh, he came, he came running out the field. Uh, get, uh, all you got to do is tell the side, "Hey, I just need a timeout." He saw something he did not like and came out to uh, run and asking for a timeout uh, so he could talk to his players. It was. <laughs> I was looking for the word, you know, and I was going to say fired up or mm -hmm. running out there with his hair on fire or let's just say animated. Animated, uh, he, very animated. Very animated in his uh, <laughs> endeavor out there to rush the field and get that timeout. Great shot of the crowd there. There's a packed house here. And I have said that we're going to talk about the treatment that we get here at Port Charlotte eventually when we get to it. And we're going to do that before this thing wraps up, kid. Third down and 10 for Port Charlotte. 6.44 on the clock. Eaton rolls to his right. He's running the whole way. Running hard. Takes a big hit, and he's only about a yard short, Ken. Yeah. Now there's, and a there's a flag. Could be a helmet to helmet. Could be a targeting. Yeah, at some point, do you do you just keep letting your run, your quarterback run the ball? He he's a, a valuable commodity. Yeah, you know he's running for about, I would say he's running for five to seven yards per oh, carry yes. tonight on average. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as not, and that's not primarily his focus. And so this time we're going to go a little wildcat. Now you got. Uh, Two brothers out here split wide. Ed G in the backfield looks like he's going to take the snap out of the Wildcat formation. But there's uh, yeah, a shot to the head. Uh, yeah, that yeah. Him. yeah uh, that's what it was. But they're going to mark off this penalty here, Kim. That, that's why I say, uh, you know, I'd rather put somebody in the Wildcat, and not uh, take down your, your quarterback who. Uh, you know, they, they have got to be, you know, if they kept statewide statistics, Port Charlotte is, is going to be ranked offensively Has top to two or three in the state easily with uh, the points and the yards and uh, running. And I mean, they, they, they have uh, put up. I don't have the stats tonight on uh, Ed G, which is E-D-D, -D, Ed, and G-U-E-R-R-E-R. Gurrier. Uh, I don't have his stats tonight. We know he ran over 200 yards and then had 20 yards receiving in the first game. Yeah, they so, haven't used him as a receiver tonight. Really haven't had to, but no. uh, uh, just another uh, tool in the toolkit. 
but I know he's well over 100 yards. Oh tonight. yes, well, definitely. well, well yes. over 100 yards tonight. So, you know, at a pace here, you know, two two weeks and you know over 300 yards. Yeah, he's and he's at a 1500 yard season if he keeps his pace up, just in a regular season. Yes, so they're good things tonight for Port Charlotte in that running game. Great jump cut there, and he goes for a gain of about five yards on the play. A play that really should have gone for about a half yard. Uh, the defensive line and the linebacker filled the hole. Watch this jump Watch cut. Watch the jump cut right there. Boop. Puts the foot in the ground and gets behind the lineman and pushes him forward and getting that positive yards. Makes uh, you feel great. If you're out there and you're number 55 and Dylan Gaither out there, you've got a back that can follow you like that on a play that was designed to go to the other side. Makes you look uh, great. And, uh, but really an offensive line performance here tonight. And this oh. time he stumbles out of his break. It goes for no gain on the play. And, and really, I think, Brian, tonight, that's the first time we've really, you know, they've stopped him a few times, but that's the first time where the field actually uh, has slowed him down. Uh, he, he's been able to handle the, all the muck out there and the, uh, pretty well. You know, sometimes different shoe, different uh, teams have different cleats. And, oh, yeah. You know, some of the guys wear soccer cleats out yeah, there. Yeah, it makes but, a difference. Uh, you, whoever uh, is in charge for the shoes tonight for Port Charlotte is a winner because the uh, players have done very well out there on that slippery field. Driving. Oh, just carrying him. There's Ed G. Ed G. For the first D. Running behind 55 again. And they're knocking on the door. They're just grinding it out here. Unless this will get them over 40 if they score. Get them to 40 for the second time in a row. Here in the Cove tonight, the theme is Ed G for the first D all night long. I can't tell you how many he has on the night, but it's it's accumulating. Uh, with four minutes and 35 seconds on the clock, he's back in that backfield once again with E. Hands the ball off to Ed G. Dri Guerrier drives forward for another nice game inside the five yard line. And it's just a slow, methodical drive straight ahead. Give it to your back. Get behind the offense line. You know, we have to shout out the offensive line because I know we talk a lot about the defensive line, but the, great, the uh, Port Charlotte offensive line has done a great job, not only for for Ed, the running back, but uh, for the passing game as well. Yeah, really good job of holding up for Eaton. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, he hasn't really been clobbered uh, a lot. This time it looks like we have a little bit of an illegal shift or a false start there. So it's actually a timeout uh, by the Fighting Tarpons. Yeah, they just uh, just trying to get a change of pace here, give them a little breather, remind them, hey, hey guys, let's let's, let's uh, we got to keep them out of the end zone, maybe get a get a strip somehow, and uh, just looking for something. Here to uh, to jumpstart them. I know it's going to be hard to score 20 points in in uh, under four minutes, but uh, you can always hope and uh, finish strong. 34 to 14 here. Look at the look at the field. Yeah, you know, talking about that oh, JV that, game last night. Great shot there from yep. the drone. Uh, but this is that muck right there in the middle of the field. That's just a, just a little bit south of the. Uh, the logo in the middle. Look at that. And you can see where they're coming down in the red zone here. Not much better here. That is a great shot. Uh, not often seen by a uh, high school broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> this time Eaton keeps it. A good tackle on the play. Uh, number 21. And he's had a really big night tonight. Connor Trim, the linebacker running back. A uh, good game tonight. Watch him. Take this one, and just a nice tackle. Nice tackle. Keep, yeah, great and job. And that's number two, Brayton Keith, uh, Crazy. And they're just taking their time here. He's had a busy night. He's holding kicks. He's out there playing defensive back. He's played a little wide receiver tonight. This time driving is Gurrier. Driving, pounding his way. But this time, the Charlotte Tarpons fighting Tartan. Tarpons, they step up and show some life here at the goal but, line. Uh, 
It's really okay. You know, if it takes four downs to get in, they're just going to run the clock down that much more. They're going to, again, take in their time here. We know who's going to get the ball. Let's see if they get in. They go option. They pitch it to Gertier. Cuts inside, driving forward, spinning into the end zone. Four, six. And he's down. Uh, Gurrier's down. Let's see him get Watch up. him. Uh, they run it to the outside. Great block there by the tackle. And, oh, got his knee twisted up. Hopefully he, he's, he's not feeling good. But he's got to be I think, he'll be all right. the, I think he's off the field. I think so. Okay, that's good. Yeah, there he is. He's, he's fine. Great great shot there, guys. He's fine. These kids rebound. It's nice being Are a teenager. Me? And he's going to go in the wing, wing back and yes. block. He's got to block an, somebody there that's going to dive after the <laughs> kicker. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Good kick. It's up. And it's good to so the freshman, Kirsten Barghausen, with another extra point. So really big things happening. The crowd is starting to move. We're seeing across the ways, looking through the heavily, heavy dose of pollen here on the windshield of the press box here. The Charlotte Tarpon fans are starting to move. And Port Charlotte fans are celebrating here at this point with a 41 to 14-point yeah, lead. You can see the crowd. This is this is the, the biggest win in the school's history against their their arch cross town, cross the river rival here in uh, the Charlotte County area. So uh, great, great reason to celebrate. It's well deserved tonight. You know, it was uh, at, certainly worth the trip down here tonight, Ken. You know, we left Manatee County, and I was thinking this is going to be a classic game for us. Yes. Uh, we have never. Uh, broadcast one of these games. We've broadcast both of these teams, but never like this. Never this game never. with all the uh, passion and, and the hate that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> There's that uh, freshman right there, number 17. And he goes for a gain about to the 39. And I'm, I'm putting a lot of stock into Trenton Curlis, the wide receiver safety there, number 17. It was about 6'1", looks about 2'10 right now. He's a big he, boy. He's going to be something. He's going to be something. Something. And the, and the kicker uh, has, we, we've talked about him all night. Statistically, he's got to be one of the top kickers just because he's on a high-scoring team. But he's statistically, you know, one of the top kickers in the state. You know, you throw a field goal in there and, you know, as a as a his point scored, he's going to be near near the top in the state of Florida. That's true. Has to be. True. And, you know, he's he's 14 years old. Amazing. He does, probably doesn't even drive. <laughs> <laughs> that is, oh, boy, look at this D end over here coming in the picture. Now he's going to cover, drop out and cover the slot receiver. And his hand off the back, jumps through there. Nice run. Got a nice, clean uniform, but a great run on the play of about five yards and that is number 28 there and that is Jaden Palmer who is a sophomore uh, running back linebacker look nice on the kid yeah look nice and he's running through the muck out there uh, you know, it, it didn't bother him one bit that time Valentino fakes the handoff now he throws it oh he's got a receiver drops it he's going to get hit and that was number 14 there and that was the Daryl Owens, the uh, junior. We've, we've talked about him. Watch him throw this. He is in the air throwing it and getting hammered and threw it right on the spot. On the and you've got to catch that. Hey, you, uh, this, this, guy, this kid's got a bright future, but you've got to bring that in. Yeah, and that's a junior receiver out there, and that's a catch. And it, it, we've seen Daryl Owens make some plays. Yes, tonight. he has. And uh, that's a catch, though, with a quarterback throwing it sidearm, underarm in a crisis yeah. mode. Got to help him out. Oh, Palmer, nice little run there. Driving forward, and he's taken out of bounds. Gain of a little bit on the play. And so, again, that was number 28, Jaden Palmer, uh, the sophomore. So that's going to bring it down to fourth down here. Minute and 44. This will probably be the last play, offensive play of the game for the Tarpons here. 
Yeah, I, I, I like the running back. You know, this is mop, mop, up, mop up time, but uh, you know he's out there playing hard, trying to you know get a good little bit of film on him uh, to uh, you know, hey, you know, hey, I can play. Three receivers out there to the left. This time, Valentino breaks the tackle, and he's going to be sacked. Takes a loss on the play. And, you know, he's going to have another game of negative numbers there for the yes. rushing. Yeah, we, we saw that in the stats where he had uh, minus 29, minus 30 yards rushing. And, and probably again, like you said, probably again tonight, uh, uh, just, just running for his life. There's times when they blocked well for him. And he's uh, when he's got time, he's like any other quarterback. He can, he can uh, pick apart a defense. Uh, got a lot of upside. Uh, but just just nothing there. Again, they definitely an improvement from three points last week, but uh, still trying to find uh, the, 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 the Charlotte's still looking for their groove on the on the offensive side of the ball as uh, they're celebrating on the Port Charlotte side. This is again a big win for this high school in this long time rivalry. Bryce Eaton takes it victory formation. Julius Roach back there. Looks like he's in a punting formation. So that's that was a little first. slow going down. <laughs> you better be careful there. Yeah, it'd be just tempting. get down. <laughs> Kale Newton, the tight end. I don't know if I, if he was slowly going down like that, have been tempting to pin the ears back there and do something stupid, but he didn't. And so a minute on the clock here, and uh, really we've seen some Almost exciting there. football. This will be it. Yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, this will be the last play. Okay, they reset the clock. And there Get it down. is. <laughs> A great uh, final play, the easiest play there for the quarterback. And you the best play. The best play for Bryce Eaton. As tonight, as the clock winds to zeros, they go out to the middle field to shake hands here, which is an accomplishment in itself between these two teams, who score 41 to 14. So. It's always great to see them uh, shaking hands and, uh, you know, it was a battle out there tonight. Uh, just uh, Port Charlotte's night uh, with that high powered offense. So we talked about the goals. Uh, Port Charlotte checks the box on all three of theirs. And, and as a result, uh, you know, with with the win tonight. Yeah, and you, you would have to say uh, the kicking game with the freshman here tonight. He did great. He did great. He came great. out and produced uh, tonight, so turn the corner on that. And I think tonight we're going to wrap things up. We want to thank our, our wonderful, uh, great new sponsor. Now that's a wrap out of Sarasota. Tonight's final score, the Port Charlotte Pirates, 41. 41. And the Charlotte Tarpons. 14. 14. <laughs> we thank you all for watching Varsity Sports Network Suncoast. Today the, is presented by the school district of Banatee County. But Varsity Sports Network Suncoast, all your favorite sports all year long, all in one place. Join us next week as we bring you the Palmetto High versus Riverview Game of the Week. I'm Brian Varnador, along with my broadcast partner, Mr. Ken Burton Jr. We'll catch you next week as we bring you Common High Riverview. Now that's a wrap.